Last Minute Charlie here. Around seven months or so have passed since Armored Core 6 released and I have a lot to say. But I first want to preface this entire video with a statement that I'm happy AC6 came out. And I've had a great deal of fun with it and I'm in some way grateful that FromSoft decided to go back to the series that mostly kept them alive throughout the early 2000s, introducing an insane amount of people into the game and the series that followed. But unfortunately, there are quite a few things the game misses the mark on that I really find it just be a shame. And it sets a really bad precedent for the series going forward. I'm a bit late to the party again in terms of this video coming out, and I'm hoping to retread some ground I made in my previous video talking about AC6 before the game came out, but I hope I can express the issues surrounding this game clearly as well as highlight the positive aspects prominently. And what better place to start than the game's mechanics? Armored Core 6's gameplay environment is constructed in such a way largely to appeal to the widest audience possible in terms of both old fans but mostly in my opinion to newer fans, as in general the game is a lower skill curve to pick up and play compared to the previous titles. And quite frankly the style of gameplay more closely resembles a 3D fighter or character action game rather than a full on mech game due to how do you control, move, and attack, with aspects of old gen being in place in terms of how you precision yourself during normal boosting, quick boosting from 4th gen for example, and aesthetical notes from 5th gen, each of which have been twisted in a way. For example, if I'm playing Armored Core 4 or really any AC game before 6, the turning speed attached to my AC governed by my leg part choice is going to be the primary factor for how fast I'm able to turn my view to the left or right flanks while I'm piloting the AC. In 6, however, all that's required is for me to move my mouse or use the right stick in a controller to freely look wherever I want with zero movement requirements let alone to lock on. This is what I say is one of the primary factors as to how 6 ends up feeling like more of a 3D action, maybe even 3D fighter game rather than a mech game, because that lack of operational quote unquote restriction isn't conducive to creating gameplay that resembles mech piloting simulation. From Chang was completely right when during pre-release he compared the game to a Gundam fighting game. From the guys I play with, it just keeps getting dubbed Xenoverse 3. There's this feeling like the devs didn't understand that a huge part about Armored Core is preventing enemy shots from ever being taken and not reacting to them solely. It's what makes Lightweight strong in the older games, as dodging the lock was something they did very well. But AC6 feels like it's built entirely on the idea that you should try to react to fire coming at you instead of preventing it by breaking locks through proper execution of movement technique. This is reinforced by the reaction dodge alert box, and the fact that during combat you are almost never not locked onto your opponent in 6. While yes, dodging shots being fired should most certainly be an option, and certainly has been an option in AC, the emphasis is clearly based upon dodging and timing, with clever positioning, while still important, not entirely the focus in AC6. This is further hindered by the fact that while you're on the ground for too long, the game will automatically turn off your boosters, causing the player to have to reactivate them with an evasive maneuver, potentially wasting energy and spoiling proper positioning behind cover. The other primary aspect is the fact that Armor Core 6, for the most part, only allows you to use one or two options for movement at any given time. In Armor Core 4, for example, when I overboost, all I have to do is tap Y or Triangle, and I can continue to perform whatever actions I was doing previously as my overbooster primes. And when the OB actually hits, I launch forward and can continue to quick boost or fire. I don't have any of my actions interrupted within that time frame. In Armored Core Verdict Day, for example, I can begin my movement by glide boosting, which is governed by a rate of acceleration and thrust associated with my boosters. I go forward after a very brief ignition, but I can also to an extent direct my glide boost left or right with a very fine degree of control on the left stick. I can also quick boost during this, choosing to QB forward, left or right, and fire my weapons at any point in time I choose to do so throughout those series of movements. This is without mentioning any other techniques or the fact that I can wall jump in Verdict Day, or how I have an actual booster toggle button which helps conserve precious energy and help me to rapidly reduce my altitude as an evasive maneuver. Compare that to AC6 where when I assault boost, despite any stats my boosters have, I am locked into an initial assault boost animation before I instantly hit maximum speed with no deviation or ability to forward quick boost. I can only choose to quick boost left or right with a flashy animation, and my only real option after the fact is to couple those movements with a quick turn which is its own separate animation, or perhaps into a kick, but I can only do one of those movements at a time with the somewhat exception of assault boosting and quick boosting together. Not to mention FromSoft made the baffling decision to not allow you to fire your weapons at all during a quick boost, which destroys any weapon that requires sustained fire to output efficient damage, while in Verdict Day or Armor Core 4, I can freely run a dual rifler and become a workhorse of solid damage. In AC6, I'm prevented from doing any offensive action when performing evasive maneuvers. I can only do one thing at a time. Not to mention the fact that in 4th gen you had the ability to chain boost, which is all about booster setup and timing. 
which you could pull off some extremely impressive maneuvers if you practiced enough. Now in AC6, it just takes two inputs, with the most advanced tech being circle strafing. It's severely limiting, and it hurts player skill expression. But the game favors instead is something I can introduce you to, called Create a Combo. <laughs> In order to take as much of an advantage of the stagger bar as possible and hence do damage while your opponent is forced to be locked in place, your goal is to create the best combo you can with your AC in order to unlock your opponent when they get caught by your string of attacks. Observe. Previous AC games had stun, based on your AC's total stability stat when getting hit by weapons, which also affected whether you would stun when firing heavy weapons. The stagger bar in AC6 forces you to get punished if the opponent successfully builds the bar, like perhaps in Sekiro. This is also reinforced by the occurrence of micro stagger, or how the Japanese call it frightening or intimidation. Like how if you use the normal punch, it will stun the AC regardless of the status of the stagger bar, allowing for further combo strings. I'm not saying it's inherently a terrible mechanic, but I don't think it fits too well with Armored Core, as it's more of a fighter mechanic. It's all about limitations. In AC6, the game mechanics themselves limit and lock you into certain actions due to its animation system, while in previous AC games, yeah, you had game mechanics inherent to the game. But for the most part, you are only really limited by the build you've created yourself and how you can move and react to situations. AC6 is a mech fighting game. It isn't solely a mech action game. There are so many insane decisions in the game as well. No velocity stat is listed in the garage, so you can't easily quantify how fast your projectiles will go. There are no real sniper weapons, with the longest range option being either manual aiming explosives or this missile launcher that they added. No extension parts, no optional parts, no inside parts, no shoulder parts. The new active warning system makes it easy to tell exactly when to avoid weapons fire, but sometimes it lies to you due to the netcode. Your energy doesn't regenerate at its full rate unless if you're touching the ground. The actual snipers in the game are bazookas. FromSoft decided for bazookas to increase their hitbox over distance traveled and airburst. You can see here with the training AC, I'm pretty close up, so obviously the attack doesn't connect. However, if I go all the way back here, check this out. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this in the training room for the first time. Hawk Brother first informed me about this before, and I was under the impression previously that it was just a factor of lag and attacker side registry for weapons when I was fighting in PvP, but really, it is this heinous. Ricochet is a mechanic in this game despite the fact there isn't any significant damage scaling based on range, of forcing an arbitrary restriction on engagement distance for close and medium range, because you just get hit with a hard damage falloff that procs a ricochet. Unlike the PS3 games, where damage scaled by distance directly, like in Verdict Day specifically, weapons could hit ineffective based on damage threshold or range, which, if you forgot the range or damage threshold, you can determine that using scan mode to find the best range to fire at. With, of course, the exception of missiles, and by the way, missile boaters in a game without flares? Fighting a missile boater that runs away after an attack or push is the equivalent of someone leaving a bag of dog poop on your front door and lighting it on fire. Just a reek that takes far too long to go away and will leave you grumbling the entire time when putting it in the trash where it belongs. The custom match system before the ranked update came out was a hassle. When you dropped in a lobby, you can ready up the AC that you have loaded already, or go into your schematics and pick whatever ACs you've saved or built on the fly. It's good freedom, but the problem at the time is that you had the option to look at any other player's AC in the lobby before the match started. All this design choice served at the time was just endless metagaming to find what sort of counter build someone can load up as fast as possible, rather than for example Verdict Day, where when you start a lobby, you have a mandatory 3 minute wait time where you can change ACs or build. You can start the match early if each player readies up, but it gives you that guaranteed time to tweak or switch, and best of all, not see the other player's build preemptively, with the added bonus of being able to see your opponent's AC at the end of a match. It's created a multiplayer environment where, if I drop into a new match in 6 and just want to change my AC real quick before we start, 
you have a solid chance of just getting immediately kicked if you're playing on the North American servers because they get pissed because they think you just looked at their AC and you're just going to bring a direct counter build and they don't want to run that match as is. It created this garbage meta gaming, and I'm glad Ranked is here where we don't have to deal with that anymore, but from August at launch till December, that's all there was, and it really made the multiplayer environment suffer. But even if it was bad then, I will say it makes more sense now that we do have Ranked, where it's truly random who you'll be facing and what you'll be facing, depending on how many people are playing at the time. Ranked is another story altogether, and really it just comes down to the style of game that FromSoft made compared to the previous titles. I S ranked during the first season, and that's really where I got to see the extremities and common builds from missile rats to laser cannon zooka tanks to laser weapon heavies to Viento lightweights, and the whole time it just felt like the fastest way to rank up was who could bring out the most annoying and cheap AC in playstyle to win. That's not something that I really liked, but not something I didn't expect with Ranked. This isn't to say I didn't have a lot of good fights at all, but no AC game has frustrated me more in the competitive scene than 6 has, second to 4 answer. Maybe I'm just mad, cause I'm bad. I don't know. But genuinely, I took a break from video games for a while and focused on snowboarding life and work, because I realized I wasn't really playing the game for fun anymore, I was taking it way too seriously, and spending the little free time I had was something that wasn't really fulfilling. The systems in the game didn't foster an engaging skill climb to me, unlike the other AC games which I've spent hours and hours playing for fun and getting better at. Also, in regards to multiplayer, you have forced best 2 out of 3, not to mention no free-for-all, no 2v2s, no 4v4, no unmanned ACs, it's a bit of a disappointment from what we had before. Because in 4 Answer, for example, you could do a free-for-all where multiple duels could occur at once on the map Great Wall, for example, one pair on the dark side and the other on the light side of the map. But no, you have a four-man lobby and two people will always have to wait for their turn to fight. I will say this though, in recognizing that AC6 is a mech fighter game, it isn't entirely terrible, even if it isn't what I want the series to continue with going from here on out, nor the depth of gameplay I was expecting when the game was announced. I've had quite a few intense matches in 6, many wins and losses where the whole time I was engaged with the fight at hand and was having a blast trying to counter my opponent, catch his timing, and him trying to do the same to me. It only really ever gets spoiled when the netcode trips out, like in this clip here. or in this one. But I can't expect perfection. For answer, it is an amazing game in its own right, but has some major netcode issues when it comes to latency as well. Up until this point, I've had this script entirely written out as fair as I could have, but I just recently came to an insane revelation, and you may notice this between the footage I have in this video, but up until this point in time, my entire 300 an hour plus playtime with AC6 has been played exclusively using softlock because I didn't like the way, on first impression, hardlock forced control away from your own aiming. So I figured in multiplayer, the only real reason why I was taking losses was because I either lost in the garage, or I played poorly and didn't time my attacks right or estimate my range correctly. No, the only reason that I've lost so much is because I haven't been using hardlock at all. Hardlock in Armored Core 6 requires you to physically take your mouse off the table, stop physically aiming, and let the game play itself for you. Because 9 times out of 10, you won't miss your shots at all. You will have next to perfect tracking and it requires less movement from the player. I have never in my life seen any game in any genre actively go this far to encouraging players to let go control over their own character to automate gameplay in a competitive setting. Armored Core 6 has zero competitive integrity because of this design decision, and even if I give the benefit of the doubt that this was a balancing decision between console and PC, it doesn't excuse the fact that the result shoots down any semblance of skill for engaging your opponent. This game is antithetical to skill and every Armored Core game that has come before it on a fundamental level. It is designed for people to perform the bare minimum input and feel like they're performing high level, masterful gameplay. This game encourages and rewards lazy, passive, and avoidant gameplay. 
This is one of the worst player versus player environments I have ever seen in the AC series or in general. Moving on to the campaign, which I'm not going to really talk much about, it's good, but I expected more. And that's really all I can criticize it for, then you did a good job. Aside from a few inconsistencies in the story, I'll go as far as to say it's one of the best campaigns in the entire series, as a solid story throughout. It's no less Raven, where I have naturally branching paths based on the missions I complete right from the get-go. On your first playthrough in AC6, you really only have a single choice in missions to decide which ending you get. And then only after you see the first and second endings, you get to see the third ending. I think the game would have served better if it had another ending. Maybe one where you side with the PCA. You get some pretty good MTs in this game, mainly on the PCA side of the wheelhouse, and I think the AC fights are pretty fun and the characters all had a very strong presence in the story, with great VA work as well. Dune by Frank Herbert has a very clear inspirational presence in the game, but with the giant worm guarding the planet, an enigmatic substance for every major force in the story is killing to get their hands on or seal away, a native population fighting against foreign control with a deep connection to the planet and the substance in question, Duncan Idaho, Gun 1 Michigan, I enjoyed it. And I'll probably replay it at some point, but I've already S-ranked the game, so I doubt I will do that soon. The multiplayer is where the game's longevity is. But as a whole, the environments, the lighting, textures, effects, it's all really amazing, and visually, this is the best AC game in terms of basic visual fidelity. However, that doesn't mean I'm saying the older games don't make up for it in their own right, in style, aesthetic, and their own artistic decisions. As for the soundtrack, I see a lot of people don't really like it because it doesn't have a lot of the same presence as the previous soundtracks did, or it kind of sounds like generic movie soundtracks, but honestly, I enjoyed it because it fit the tone of the setting and missions they played in. I just wish there was more songs that had that old charm, like I think most people do. But now that we have that third disc, even though it's not in-game, it gives that classic soul with a lot of comeback tracks for every generation with old music artists coming back like Kota Hoshino, Tsukasa Saito, Hideyuki Eto, and a newcomer like Oshoi Miyazawa, who used to be an amateur musician that went by Giovansen underscore 3P, whom of which had a song make it on a special disc album that Frequency the FromSoft sound team released previously. He made a song on disc 3 that includes the entire AC6 development staff as the chorus, which really gets to show the love they genuinely had for 6 in bringing the series back. Also, I wish they had a function in multiplayer where if they progressed in the story, you would unlock certain tracks that appeared at certain story beats or even a BGM selector. Otherwise, the OST is generally good, and I'm glad the Frequency team got to branch out with synths, and that Yuka Kitamura had a little bit of a presence in Disc 3 before she left from software. Some of my favorite tracks include Point of No Return, Covert Ops, and Stargazer. Before I close this video off, I want to give the floor to members of the community that I know and have played with and let them speak on the game on their own terms. I asked them three simple questions. What is the best aspect of Armored Core 6? What is the worst aspect of Armored Core 6? And how should FromSoft improve in the next AC game? Here are their answers. The best aspect of Armored Core 6 is how it takes elements from previous games reworks them and combines them with something new to create a unique experience that represents everything that came before it. You have the branching mission structure similar to Last Raven, and alternate paths like in the Nexus second disc. You have an aesthetic that harkens back to the days of AC1, and also newer designs which take a page out of some existing IPs while also bringing some new ideas to the table. You have OS tuning, which is a mix of optional parts from previous gens, with parts tunings and some additional features like boost kick and manual aim. Armored Core 6 represents each previous iteration that has come before it, and although it doesn't always take the best pieces from each, nor does it always meld them perfectly together, it does try to pay respect to its history while still creating something new and exciting, but yet still feels very familiar. The worst aspect of Armored Core 6 is despite how successful it is, the game is a reminder that From Software is still showing the inflexibility of their mindset and how it limits them. Multiplayer is probably the most obvious aspect. You wouldn't think it'd be so bad, considering the last two titles, Armored Core 5 and Verdict Day, were multiplayer focused games, but AC6 feels like it didn't take any lessons learned from that era when it came to its formulation. And a lot of people will probably say, hey, AC6 is mainly a single player game. But the key thing to keep in mind is that the game fails to meet a lot of simple benchmarks that most people expect to get, even from a basic multiplayer experience. 
And we're not talking just balancing, which is a whole nother bag of worms. The structure feels antiquated and cumbersome. The game lacks any true matchmaking functionality, which means it's a coin toss in terms of the skill level that you'll find. Game modes are limited to 1v1 and 3v3, and there is very little additional functionality or flexibility. For example, although you can fit more than six people in the room, this includes spectators, you cannot have less than the minimum required, i.e., in a 3v3 lobby, you have to have six people. You cannot arbitrarily do a 2v2, the game will not allow it. The newest problem, for example, with the most recent 1.05 patch, is how it does not punish people if they force quit a ranked match. This also seeps into other less obvious aspects of the game, such as the AC test area. Almost 25 years later, and players can't see the frame data, can't change maps, and you can't modify any variable beyond switching between test MTs and a test AC. This restrictiveness can be found in a lot of places and prevents Armored Core from being a truly perfect game. When it comes to improving the next AC game, Armored Core 6 has shown that From Software still have that magical touch, that it can create a mecha experience that no other company has been able to, but they are held back by certain philosophies which prevents the AC games from being quote, perfect, and instead just okay, decent, and sometimes really good. To bridge this gap, they need to find a better balance which allows them to continue bringing in new players, build a challenging experience for its longtime veterans, and find a better synergy for their approach to their single player and multiplayer components. So when I think about the best aspect of Armor Core 6, I would probably say it's the campaign. I think this is arguably the best campaign we've had in an Armor Core game especially the new game cycles. I'm not usually big on new game cycles, and I found myself really wanting to go in and see how the missions change, especially around our third play through the game. Some big changes there and between you know that and additional parts we unlocking and the way the arenas worked and like the secret arenas that popped up. I think the, the campaign was easily the most enjoyable part of the game. Uh, as for the least favorite aspect or worst aspect of the game, I think right now it would be balance. I think the approach that we've seen from Soft take to balance has been very cyclical. And so we've had kind of flavor of the month comps that rise each month, you know, when they, they deploy a new patch. For a while we had the, the Zimmermans and the Kicks, and then we had the small missile boats, and now we kind of have the rock, paper, scissors set up. And with the rate that they're patching, we have very cookie cutter builds that rise up for a month and then get touched, and then new builds rise up. And it's, it's cyclical the way it's happening right now. And they can't seem to, to nail the balance to where a lot more stuff is viable. And uh, I mean, I get it. It takes time to, to get the data and figure out what you want. But I definitely think that would be the worst aspect at the moment. Uh, in terms of what they could do better, looking at the multiplayer aspect of the game, it kind of reminds me of Elden Ring, where you had a, a fully fleshed out campaign and then months down the line after the fact they just kind of threw us the arena and that kind of feels similar here how we got ranked after the fact and when i think about longevity in games obviously online components are a huge part of that you know you're gonna have some people that are gonna be playing the campaign years from now but if you want the community to stay active and you want people actively engaging with the game have high concurrent player accounts you have to have a strong online component and whether that's going to be in the form of uh, a co-op in like an expansion or with a bigger focus on PvP, I think we need to see an actual team that's dedicated to just that and making sure it's as smooth as possible. Because you know, right now, looking at the online component, it's fun to mess around in, but you know, between netcode issues, balance issues, issues with the, the ranking system, uh, limited game modes, there's just a lot that could really be expanded there to make it more enjoyable, and I think it's definitely uh, a weak point and something that needs to be expanded on in the next game. In my opinion, the best aspect of Armored Core 6 as an entry is that it brought a very focused and modern single player campaign to the table, with a lot of classic Armored Core charm. Many of the Armored Core entries have a notable lack of hook to their stories with some entries having very little at all. Armored Core 6, through player progression, implied and expository storytelling, delivers a top-notch entry point for new players. 
The worst aspect on the flip side of that coin is that the multiplayer aspect of the game feels very firmly like an afterthought, despite being a key factor that many existing fans intended to judge the game on, and what would keep a community alive years after release. Most of the choices made for the sake of facilitating a strong single player action title wound up making Armored Core 6 multiplayer feel much less diverse and exciting than prior titles to a fairly large contingent of existing players. Outside of Gen 2, the base game is never really the best entry of any generation. For another Armored Core title, I would like to see them continue the 6th generation as you would have seen the secondary titles such as For Answer and Verdict Day, where FromSoft decides to take the bones of what has worked and turn the game up to 11. We see the relative power level of Armored Cores change drastically over individual entries, and a secondary title to 6 could be the change that we hope to see. For me, personally, a larger focus put into extending the effective range of weapons and mobility of ACs would go a long way toward making them feel less claustrophobic and more diverse. Couple that with proper matchmaking and co-op features, and I'd say we truly would have the next generation of Armored Core on our hands. A multiplayer-focused version of 6, set a bit into the future with technological enhancements and new coral augmentations, would be incredibly positive. The best aspect of Armour Core 6 for me is the flow of the game. It's very easy to get into. You're going to build a mech, you're going to try the mission. If you fail, you go back, you rebuild, and you try again. It's just a nice, easy flow you can just slip into and have a real good time with. The worst aspect for Armour Core 6 for me has to be some of the story. I'm not particularly fond of the All Mind ending. I think there's too much of this, oh, they've just fixed it all, don't you worry about it. I think we just need a bit more depth in there. I think to improve in the future, I'd like to see FromSoft do more single player content. We've got this great game as it is, but you just want more. As I said, I'm not much of a PvP player myself, so it will differ, but to me, more single player content would be better. Hey, it's Inve. Thanks to Striker for having me on. I initially gave him about 30 seconds of audio that boiled down to, well, the campaign was alright, but the multiplayer sucks. That's still true, but I have some other thoughts as well. I'm glad that a new game with Armored Core in the title released, because it gets more people into the franchise, and while it's been a double-edged sword, I think anything that increases the chances of players getting on the old game's PvP is a good thing, even if that increase in chances is a small one. I also think the campaign's pretty good, as I mentioned briefly earlier, and that it manages to tell a story considerably better than the prior games in the series. Unfortunately, this presentation kind of came with a cost. All my favorite weapons and mechanics disappeared. It truly feels like the monkey's paw curling. From Software managed to make a good story and a game that's easier for players to get into with a good tutorial to boot, but the piloting of our mech feels too easy to get into. It feels as if the mech does everything that you had to learn how to do in past games, but it does each thing automatically. While this might sound like a good thing to some, in my opinion, the fun of Armored Core has always been learning how the mechanics interact and how you can use them to best get unique playstyles and movement styles out of your particular robot. The game feels like it lacks something. That, that spice. That sauce. And for answer, a verdict day, I've always had the feeling there's another piece of game to master, something to learn, some mechanic to practice, but in 6, the amount of control that's taken away from you and given to things like Assault Boost or the new lock-on system feels bad and restrictive. It feels like when I'm manually aiming my Assault Boost or trying to manually retain a lock, I'm in a worse position than someone that's just letting the game take control for them. I don't like that. It just isn't how I prefer games to be. So I'll be back over in for answer. Six was a fun theme park ride the first few times, but I have no desire to return to it. It truly feels like a game that gets worse the more you play, because as you further understand the mechanics, it becomes clearer and clearer how much player agency and skill expression has been reduced from prior entries that are still available and playable today. Play, uh, play some for answer, by the way. This is my mandatory plug. What is the best aspect of Armored Core 6? Some of the ideas they had for the weapons were interesting, like the Karasawa having a machine gun mode and a single strong fire mode, and something in between. Reminds me a lot of the Aldi from 5th gen. What is the worst aspect of Armor Core 6? The movement system and the base mechanics are downright terrible on their own, and even more when you compare them to the other titles. A ton of the fundamental issues with the game come from its base mechanics, like the way the FCS works, the energy economy, and how much the game locks you into animations, something that was done extremely rarely in the other titles. How should FromSoftware improve in the next AC game? 
The NATO dropped their focus on reacting to attacks and focus more on giving tools to prevent attacks instead. High level AC gameplay has always been about preventing attacks rather than reaction dodging them like AC6 so desperately wants you to do. What is the best aspect of ARM Core 6? For me it is the fact that it is the first PC release of AC, allowing all players to enjoy the game regardless of the platform. I do like the visuals and the sound design a lot as well. For example, choral weapons sound really distinct and unique and are honestly a personally, personal highlight to me. Mm, yeah, as for the visuals, I thought the game looked pretty and had some really cool designs, specifically some of the PCA NPCs. Honestly, some of the AC and weapons and part designs um, were pretty decent as well, although I felt like it was not really that unique and more of a mix between so, um, some of the safer designs of 4th gen and old gen. What is the worst aspect of Armored Core 6? Um, there's a lot I do not like about the game, and if I had to list everything, honestly I would be sitting here rambling for days. Um, to keep it short, they made AC6 too arcadey and put too much Souls DNA into it. A lot of the same aspects, such as turn rate for different legs or tuning for different AC parts, um, got cut or too simplified. The fact that a simple weapon stats, such as weapon velocity, is now a hidden stat is uh, pretty insane to me. Instead we got like a Souls-like lock-on mechanic and a Sekiro's Tiger system, which to some extent makes AC6 kind of um, a Souls reskin with extra steps and in part losing its identity. Um, with the addition of certain mechanics such as Assault Boost, the game becomes further simplified and um, it does too much for a simple input. With the press of a single button you become faster, do more stagger and get less stagger meter. Which is honestly kinda insane to me. Because of this and removal of any sort of realistic long range weaponry, aside from like missiles, AC6 feels more like a stat, cha stat check game and lost little variety in builds with either having a missile kiter, uh, playing AP percentage lead, which is another terrible mechanic and worse than the old AP lead we had in the, the older games, um, literally in every way. Or you just play some sort of brawler, usually a tank, heavy or quad. How should From Software improve in the next AC game? From Software needs to take a step back and take a look at the older AC games and its identity as well as what made them good. Or what caused people, for example, to play games like VD literally until the very last second, until the server got shut down recently. I would like them to bring back the ability to actually cut down your boosters and free fall wall jumps, maybe even chain boosting, and honestly if not f for all of that, then at the very least I would like to see fights that happen beyond melee range again. I don't know, via snipers or long range FCS or um, actual muzzle velocity. Um, also, please for the love of god, delete stagger from the face of the earth. That is just an absolute terrible mechanic. Get rid of it. Best aspect of AC6. The best aspect of AC6, in my opinion, is the fact that it has attracted uh, new players to the PvP scene of the older games. The worst aspect of AC6. The worst aspect of AC6 for me is the dumbed down movement freedom, which I felt instantly upon booting the game, and uh, it just prevented me to enjoy it as much as I could have. Should I have not played the previous games? What should be improved? In my opinion, the chief improvements that could be made is an increase in skill expression by way of making the movement mechanics more complex um, and also looking back at the previous AC titles and borrowing ideas from them instead of looking at the recent action titles by From Software and borrowing from there. There's no individual best aspect of Armor Core 6 because so many individual parts of the game are so cool and work together so well. I love the bosses, I love the story, and I love customization. The worst aspect is easily attitude stability. It's a bad mechanic, it works really well in single player. If the next game wants to be more engaging, Frim should probably change or remove attitude, stability, and focus on more active aiming systems. For me, the best aspect of AC6 is just easily the pain decal systems. It's the only thing that keeps me coming back to the game at this point. 
Um, one of the worst aspects in my eyes is just the lack of part variety. I keep wanting to make new things, but it's just stifling because it feels like I've used up everything. One of the things I do really want to see though in the next installment of AC is going to be an increase in the viable combat range. If they can add that, that would just bring so much more to the missions and the actual process of building an AC. Honestly, best aspects of Armor Core 6 are voice actors, action gameplay, and pretty comprehensible plot. For the comprehensible plot, compared to games like Armor Core 4, AC6 is pretty open with its plot. You're told what you are, what you do, and pretty much what you end up becoming. Yes, the whole lore might be vague because it's from so game, but the campaign plot itself is understandable for someone who isn't seeking out hidden lore. For the voice actors, compared to 4 gen and pretty much all gen, they actually did a good job. As an example, V2 Snail in the Liberation ending. When you defeat him, voice actor does a great job portraying a man exploding to bits in giant machine. Especially the Japanese one. For the gameplay, it's probably not some kind of big news that Armor Core games are about action. Somewhere it's about a fast-paced one, like Armor Core for answer. Somewhere it's about thinking through your strategy, like in the Armor Core Vertic Day. I might say that Armor Core 6 pretty much is like a 4-gen AC game, but not to comprehensible levels. The worst aspects? There are many flaws within the game, but I will point out those that are worst ones by my subjective opinion. The lack of multiplayer options really cut the amount of stuff you can do in AC6. You get either a 1v1 fight or 3v3 fight. That's it. Compared to 4th gen. Actually, forget about the 4th gen. Compared to 5th gen. The 5th gen introduced so many options for you to play with. Amoco 5 was almost entirely based around multiplayer, as I've heard. One of the worst aspects are not just the netcode, but the way how game handles the netcode. It's number one reason why it's not fun to play the PvP of said game. Bear with me, you dodge a slow moving projectile, and you still get both damaged and staggered. Is it frustrating? Yes, it is, but that's how a target sided netcode works. Just because they hit you on their screen, you get damaged. There's no way to correctly dodge a leggy shot, since you will get hit anyway. This might be a hot take, but Armor Core 6 has worst amount of customization in both PvE and PvP. Heat guns, hover legs, sniper rifles, rail cannons, raiders, flares, relation missiles, all of this is gone. Compared to previous games where there was much more parts and guns to use. Hell, even if CS weren't just free numbers too, which actually matter. I'm not some kind of game developer to say how to fix or improve the game that I play. However, I believe AC6 is like Dark Souls 2 in some way. It introduces you new mechanics that will surely be improved in the next game, like Armor Core 6, Waters of Baikal, or even Armor Core 7. Just like Elden Ring took Dark Souls 2 mechanics and make them better. Hey guys, Oro here. The best aspect of Armored Core 6 is the customization. The ability to make your mech yours. Uh, I really love going online and seeing everyone's designs, including like their emblems and ACs. Uh, that's definitely the best part for me. Uh, just seeing how creative people can be uh, with all the different parts and tools we've been given is awesome. Uh, the worst aspect of Armored Core 6 is the overall balance in PvP. Uh, I think that the stagger system is actually amazing. I really like it, but the entire game needs to be better balanced around it. I feel like they have a lot of tools that just aren't. Um, the pool of viable competitive weapons and parts is just way too small. The maps are too big and the balance patches are way too conservative. They need to make bigger changes to shake up the meta and make the game a little more interesting, uh, in my opinion. FromSoft should improve the next game by focusing more on the multiplayer aspect. After players complete the campaign, us PvPers are the ones that keep the game alive and continue playing. The clan system, where you can queue up with friends and uh, have clan battles and fight over territory similar to Armored Core 5, would be huge for the longevity of the next game after launch. Armored Core 6 is still one of my favorite games of all time, and I'm super excited to see what FromSoft does next. So to keep things simple, I've decided to answer your questions as literally as possible, Striker. So I think the best aspect of Armored Core 6 is definitely the presentation. Um, it blows all the other Armored, Armored Core games out of the water. Um, in terms of mainly the, not really the graphical fidelity, but the designs of the ACs, the designs of the weapons, 
the uh, effects, the way the HUD looks, the way the menus look, all of it is just so well organized and designed together that it really just fits so well in its own space. This also applies to the enemy designs, they look fabulous. I love the... I wish there was more variety, honestly, but what we do have is pretty good. The bosses especially are very uh, standout to me. The worst aspect of Armor Core 6 is the multiplayer experience, easily. Um, and, I'm no, and I don't really just mean the balancing, per se, although that is part of it. It's mainly the fact that the networking and the connection issues are just completely broken. The fact that particle effects and projectiles just will not show up sometimes for the defender. Whereas for the attacker, because the registration is attacker sided, they'll just be hitting them. And for the defender, it looks like they're getting hit by literal air. And all of a sudden, half their AP is gone and they're staggered. So, the balancing is one thing. The fact that the network stuff just does not work properly is a whole different plate. Fucking platter, even. And it's the biggest thing that is a deal breaker for multiplayer for me is just the fact that it's so hard to follow what is going on because so many so much stuff is just not accurate to what you see on the screen. As far as how they should improve the next AC game, honestly, what they should do is play through or at least look through all of the older Armored Core games and find aspects of those games that define them and see if they can refine them in, in, a sh in some way, shape, or form. For example, um, movement, for instance. What, what would be the ideal Armored Core movement? Because in my opinion, the movement in Armored Core 6 is not it. Um, when you can essentially play the entire game with hard lock and um, assault boost, right? The uh, fact, and then again, I mentioned the network issues. That means even if you quick boost out of shot, sometimes it won't work like that. And sometimes you get hit anyway, even though you clearly quick boosted out of the way, you know? It's just stuff like that. So, yeah. Summarize best, act of, best aspect of Armor Core 6, the presentation, worst aspect, the multiplayer experience, and how they should improve the next AC game. Take inspiration from the older AC games and see what works and what doesn't work to create the ultimate sort of AC experience. Armored Core 6 is a great game, and I mean it. The single player experience is fantastic. I really, really loved it. The voice fight, oh man, is real good. Never have I felt like a badass, but the multiplayer isn't as fun as the previous titles or the single player experience. It's unbalanced. Remember print of Zimmerman? Yeah. Oh, and then that got sucks too, I guess. Uh, addition to that, the stagger mechanic just doesn't feel right for an AC game. The entire game having built around the stagger mechanic isn't really fun in my opinion. Let's just hope that the only thing that could fix this is having the game to be more balanced like waiting more patches in the meantime I'll just play some friends or PvP I guess AC6 の一番の魅力は多くの人に遊んでもらえる操作性だと思います。AC6では多くの人にゲームをプレイしてもらうための試みだったと思いますが、おそらく成功したと思います。アーマードコアというタイトルを多くの人に遊んでもらうためには何らかの改革が必要でした。マニュアルサイティングの重要性を下げることは大胆かつ正しい決断だったと思います。実際AC6の売り上げは以前のシリーズに比べて大幅に増
。次の AC に関してですが、自分たちが作りたいものを作ればいいと思います。ただ、単に不快なシステムを導入するのではなく、より快適にプレイできるシステムを考えるべきだと思います。多くの人に楽しんでもらえるような素晴らしいゲームを作ってほしいです。Armor Core 6's biggest strength is just how accessible it is. Prior games in the franchise have been known to be infamously complicated and convoluted in the way you control your AC and wrestle with many of their unexplained mechanics. Old AC games had an exceedingly esoteric button layout that many found hard to learn. Managing a lockbox that can get annoyingly small, or fumbling with your AC crippling itself from overheating without the games giving you the appropriate informational tools can lead to a distasteful experience that can turn off many new players. Compound this with From Software's willingness to treat each new installment in the franchise with small iterative adjustments, and it led to what many critics would describe as the same experience recycled over and over again, which grew stale over time. All of the AC games were given very short production cycles and minimal budgets, so the games never got the proper attention required to truly break out of their shells. With Fires of Rubicon and a newfound large budget backing it, From Software took an entirely different approach to its mech franchise. They nixed mechanics like turning speed, overheating, gen busting, lockbox control, and turned the robot simulation franchise into a full on third person action game. The endless customization is still at its foundation, but the way it plays and feels is completely different. With the ability to hardlock onto their opponent, it allowed for many newcomers with no experience whatsoever with past AC games to pilot their AC creation at a very high level without having to worry about refining their tracking mechanics over time. From Software also took a more traditional approach to boss design with Fires of Rubicon as well. While without a doubt learning from their experiences with making the Souls games, they crafted visually stunning bosses in AC 6 that feel fun and engaging to play, while fine tuning the underlying mechanics of AC 6 to reward a very aggressive and visceral playstyle that revolves around staggering and punishing these massive enemies in grandiose fashion. However, it's these very same mechanics that lead to what I would consider AC 6's weakest point. All but one of the Armor Core games have been designed with their PvE experience in mind first and foremost. While tacking on multiplayer functionality as an afterthought. AC6 also happens to be one of these examples. From s o f t made it very clear that they wanted to craft the best single player experience possible. And I would say that they excelled in this and then some. However, when it comes to AC6's multiplayer, many of the very same deliberate mechanics From s o f t used to create an exceptional campaign led to a very shallow multiplayer experience. That lacks many of the intricacies and room for skill expression the previous AC games might have had. Features like hard lock, the emphasis on stagger punishes, and the dominance on assault boost reliability make for a great and aggressive campaign that lead to a less dynamic and very automated multiplayer experience. Traditional AC skill sets like tracking ability, or outmaneuvering your opponent in close, or playing a delicate neutral mid range game have been glossed over in favor of a more robotic style of play that the game forces you into. A lot of the older AC games were more loosely crafted with less overbearing mechanics. The less the game's mechanics dictate how you can play, the more room for the creativity and skill expression of the player to shine through. This is Penguin Deuce.、Um, I've been thinking about the questions that you asked me, and I think that you can make a pretty strong case that the best and worst aspect of Armored Core 6 is the accessibility. And what I mean by that is that realistically, the game is easier than ever to just pick up and play. And that's, that's, to me, anyways, that's a really good thing. But I could see how that would be an issue for other people because I think they liked how esoteric and weird the controls used to be, as well as、um, how complex the statistics and stuff were. And also, that you could, you could I don't want to say more easily, but I can't think of a better way to phrase it. So I'll just I'll run with that. But like, more easily. Express skill through the control of the AC in the older games, especially like ACs 1 through 3, I think. But I think that with it being so much more accessible and simplified without really losing any quality, just makes it like an easier game for someone to pick up and play and for new and old fans just like get into and enjoy. And to me, that's great because it's just so much easier to make. Someone have a good time that way than it used to be, where you'd have to like literally invest time into teaching them the game before they could even really truly enjoy it,、um, especially if they're running with like a tougher crowd and, and PvP centric folks, right?、Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's probably both the best and worst aspect, but I would argue that it's more good than bad.、Um, what was the other question? How should From improve in the next game? Okay. I think 
as good as the game is, I think it would be interesting to bring back some of the mechanics and see how things pan out. So for example, I think bringing back turning speed and lockboxes and extending the ranges would all be kind of interesting things to see. Um, I don't know that I mind the part selection. I think it's actually pretty great. And because it, it seems like a smaller set now, but everything kind of has its own role and there's a lot less useless parts as opposed to before. So I think I'm okay with that. But I do think that bringing back some of the old mechanics could be interesting. They'd have to tweak other things, of course, but I think I think it could be done and I think it'd be interesting and fun. And yeah, I think I that's it really. I love Armored Core 6. I think it's great. Um, I'm having a great time with it. I don't see myself stopping anytime soon playing it. But I think I'd be willing to play something something different if they had something in mind and they could execute on it. Um, I hope that answers your questions. Later, man. The best part of AC6 is that I think AC6 really captured the fun essence of an AC game. Getting money to make and experiment with AC builds and using said AC builds to either get your ass kicked or kicking ass and then repeating that cycle is present in AC6 so with the added benefit of you looking real cool while doing it. But it kind of ends there. The worst part about AC6 is how simple the game is mechanically. By that I mean how in other hardcore games, one of the motives for continuing the cycle of fight tuning your AC and making new ones was the fact that a lot of the gameplay was dependent on your skill as a player. There were high skill builds that demolish other players and take a lot of skill to use, and then there were the things you start off with to get a feeling how you, you would want to pilot an AC. Mid-range brawler, rushdown light, jousting tank, etc. All of these playstyles have been streamlined into a rushdown and long-range mosquito. Due to assault boost, both these playstyles could be mastered by lobotomite. You press a button and it gives you the ability to close in with no downsides or to run away with no downsides. The worst part of this as well is that they got rid of AP lead too, so it makes it even more simplistic. Usually the guy with the AP lead would have to fight for its life to keep his AP up, and now with percentages the most meta builds are those that got stability and AP per weight or can fly indefinitely with no repercussions because of no AP lead. Weapon selection also got reduced. Where are my snipers? There are also a distinct lack of frame parts compared to 5th gen and the old generation games. I just wish they made things a little more difficult to master. If FromSoft were to make another AC game or DLC type thing, they would need to make things more complex, make Assault Boost have some downsides instead of being a move that lets you close them for free, make it tarted land and get rid of hard lock. Make aiming a way to differentiate skilled players versus non-skilled players and add more parts and give me a reason to use parts that don't max stability. As of now, this game is kind of like Armored Core 2. Armored Core 2 they gave Overbeast for free. No penalties whatsoever and you could practically have it for an infinite amount of time with limit release. FromSoft realized that building a game around one mechanic, overboosting, was kind of dumb, especially when you make that ability free and easy to use. And in their next title, they made overboost have even the tiniest of consequence and it made the game way better. I'm glad that AC6 got the fun aspect of Armor Core down, but that the fun aspect isn't the reason why I keep coming back to play Armor Core. Thank you, Striker, for reaching out. Uh, my game pilot name is Work in Progress, and I've been playing the series since the release of Master Arena. Your first question, what is the best aspect of Armor Core 6? I would say it's a new camera. It's no more tied to the back of the EC, and it's exactly what Armor Core needed to become a modern action game. Using the Quarter Online as an example, um, having your vision tied to your mouse or right joystick is much more fluid and in line with shooter conventions. I certainly enjoy the way that weapons need to catch up once lock is made. Unfortunately, they didn't implement enough of a penalty when it comes to heavier builds, as most mechs can pretty much pivot in place at breakneck speeds with auto quick turns. This is unlike every other armor core where turn speed is a very important stat and will allow lights to run around heavy builds. I'm sure someone has already mentioned this.
quick turns were introduced in Armor Core 4 and were required the player to input a very specific quick boost plus turn combination, adding a level of difficulty, rewarding experienced pilots. This leads me to the second question. What is the worst aspect of Armor Core 6? I would say it is the quick turn mechanic and how it is automatic. As an Armor Core or even the Courier, turn speed is valuable. Heavier mechs should have a more difficult time rotating and tracking faster opponents. Right now, lighter builds have a higher skill floor to get good with as you are basically made out of paper and need to close up to at least 100 meters to make weapons work like the Vientos, which makes it difficult to react on time to dodge the LCBs or the Zook hits, allowing tanks to be the master of the brawling distance. Your final question, how should From Software improve the next game? In my opinion, From Software should reintroduce the AI pilots. There is a, sorry my French, je ne sais quoi, to building your favorite AC. What it lacks is the soul to pilot that AC and watch it from afar. Many times I would like to practice against myself just to find my own weaknesses. Luckily, there is the internet to find multitudes of people to play against, but it's never your own creation at 100%. With the weight and importance of AI at 6, I was surprised there wasn't a final fight basically against All Might and what she learned about you. A fight where she would basically pit your best AC or your best creation against yourself. I, I would have found that really interesting. Hopefully from software will reintroduce AI in their next armor core. Best aspect would be gameplay. Definitely feels really good all around. Uh, the worst thing would probably be the lack of long range gun options. And definitely one thing I'd like to see in the next one would be things probably taken from the fifth generation like wall kicking and probably some things from fourth gen as well because definitely would add quite a bit and just adding more variety overall would be nice all right so ac6 positives ac6 negatives ac6 feature we're going to start with the positives i have a few footnotes here um i'd say the most positive aspects of uh six as a longtime fan i've been playing since master of arena came out in north america uh, the world building and level design are pretty huge improvements. And then I would say excess accessibility and speed. I like the overall speed of the game. I don't think it's too fast. I'm not a big fan of Harvard Core 4 Answer. I'm a big fan of 3rd Gen. I'm a big fan of the general speed here. And then um, just think kind of the level design, the added verticality. It's it's just pretty solid overall. Oh, those are the main positives for me. Negatives with AC6 are a lot easier to talk about. Um, the big one for me, I think the big one for not too many people, but a fair amount in the old gen community would be a lack of churn speed and engagement range. I think the lack of churn speed is very detrimental to PvP. Um, it just feels kind of crappy like it just i don't i do not like the snap turning it, it, re, it feels like it removes some build variety and then the engagement ranges all feel it feels like a quarter of what it should be i think quadrupling engagement ranges for a lot of weapons would be really good uh, increasing the ricochet distance uh, it's a lot easier to talk about ac6 negatives than it is the positives but I think the biggest ones for me definitely has to be turn speed. I cannot stop complaining about turn speed. I will keep complaining about turn speed. As far as uh, the future of Armored Core 6 goes, man, the biggest things I'm looking for is just co-op and improved multiplayer. I'd like to see better engagement ranges. I'd really like to conti see continued left arm only uh, melee weapons. I don't think dual wielding melee should ever come back to Armored Core. I spent years playing Core Answer. <laughs> I multiplayer, I just don't want to see it again. And uh, maybe even slower speed and uh, more T 
team-based mechanics like Verdict Day. All opinions that people aren't going to like, probably. But the um, more co-op, more multiplayer. And uh, just more parts, but that's kind of a given. You know, no one's ever mad at getting more and more parts and bigger arenas. I'd just like to honestly get another goddamn AC game. That's about it. This is for you, Striker. You asked me how many, how long ago was it anyway? Oh my god, okay, it was a couple of months ago. Kinda of forgot about it, but I'm not having forgotten about it now, so I guess I'll get to work here. You asked me what is the best aspects of Armor Core 6? Wow, that's a that's actually the hardest question out of all these previous questions here. Hardest part of Armor Core the, 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 the best part of Armor Core 6 is the fact that I guess you could move Well the movement in Armor Core 6, because of overboosting, and because it's like Gundam Versus, allows you to move three-dimensionally more so than in 4th Gen. So one problem we'll always have with Armor Core, especially 4th Gen, is that a lot of the emphasis was on lateral movement, so you only really quick boost in like, you know, lateral, which would mean left and right, back and forward. You really couldn't quick boost up or down. And not much has changed, but in Armor Core 6, you could overboost, and you could change the angle of your overboost to any angle in particular, as long as you're heading towards an object or whatever direction you're aiming at. And I, and I mean, it's, a, it's a definitely a, an improvement. The camera itself adjusts to the angle, to the rotation and orientation of your AC, whereas in older games, you're really only moving parallel to the floor. And your camera will remain parallel to the floor. So I thought that was like a better change than, than most. That was part of my favorite thing that the game came up with. It gave a sense of flight. And in the other AC games, you don't really fly. So you kind of have like a jetpack, but your feet are level to the floor at all times. In Armor Core 6, not as bad. It is actually pretty good. What is the worst aspect of Armor Core 6? <laughs> okay, now. No, this is this is difficult only because I can think of many reasons. Um, auto locking is one of them. Uh, <laughs> I think that was probably the single worst mistake you can make. And I remember pre-release, a lot of arguments came about where auto lock would essentially remove the ability for a person to free aim in the game. A lot of like skills removed from that aspect and people will assure you that there's three types of lock-on mechanisms and weapons get an accuracy deducted uh, deduction and essentially none of that mattered because as we all saw shotguns were pr uh, prominent flamethrowers i mean there wasn't a single weapon i think like dual uh chain guns that literally just didn't break the game based on just auto locking alone Auto locking allowed a person's camera and AC to readjust and realign where the person or the target is, not how you actually move your camera, which re removed a lot of load on the player's inputs, but at the same time, it automated fighting. I played a lot of Gundam Versus, so what the remedy to that over there is um, you get an accuracy deduction depending on the angle of your mobile suit, right? So if you shoot from behind, or if you shoot from behind yourself and your AC rotated 180, you're essentially trapped there unless you cancel boost. And even so, you may not be able to be accurate because projectiles themselves are slower. So it allowed people to maneuver. You don't get that kind of luxury in armor course. So due to all the fast paced combat and the fast paced projectiles, it's a little hard to evade even at close quarter. Essentially a person with automated weaponry is just gonna mow you down. You can't really avoid that. Um, I can get into it with... That's one of the major problems besides the stagger mechanic, which I think is absolutely unnecessary. Or at, at, at least a little too exaggerated, you know? It would have been nice to have a stagger mechanic that didn't build up right away in the fight. I think you're already getting punished by losing health. You don't need to stand still if somebody hits you with a songbird the wrong way, you know? Or, or Zimmers, you know, when that was prevalent before the patches and, you know, uh, nerfs and re uh, rebalancing of the game. But the point is, you have an auto lock system plus a stagger mechanic, uh, plus a stagger mechanic, and what do you, what do you expect was going to happen? Like, 
that you're gonna obviously build to auto lock, never miss, and hit things and make them and stun them. You're you're double punishing a player. So it's like I I believe that that breaks up the flow of a game. If you're gonna make the game fast paced, then you shouldn't have a system that will disable the ability to maintain pace. If you're gonna do so, it has to be something egregious. Like they build up stun over a long period of time, in which is you know that's you can't. It's no longer negligible. You, you, you're gonna have to get it. Uh, and, you know, it's it's like armor core heat mechanic from like Nexus, where people overheat just because somebody hits you with a machine gun the wrong way. The double punishment. It, I was never a fan of it. Um, so we went over auto lock. We went over uh, the staggering systems. I think the two biggest problems I think in armor core six. Um, the limited arenas or putting two uh, pretty close quarter arenas in PvP, you know, I think a little bit map variety or at least greater map variety. I, I've seen better in Armor Core 5 and 5 uh, Verdict Day would have been nice. Um, but yeah, but those are the single most. Oh, I guess weapon variety too, right? So that's the, here's the third problem. Um, there's not a long, there's not enough emphasis on long range combat. I don't think there's a rifle in that game that goes beyond 30, 300 units. And 300 units of Armor Core 6 is essentially 100 units of Armor Core uh, uh, Silent Line. So there's no Finra, there's no uh, RS, there's no long range gameplay. It's either you missile boat long range or you just railgun long range. I, I believe that proper long range cannon support would at least break up the monotony of getting rushed, which seems to be the thing. That's the three major problems I have with the product right now. How should from soft? How should from software? Yeah, from soft. From software. From software. Improve in the next AC game. Ah. Oh. Based on what you have now, because you don't want to improve a product with a new product and completely not only just alienate the fans that you have now, but then you have to build from scratch. So it'd be better now to build what you have. So. I'm guessing in the works there's going to be an Armor Core 6 DLC of some sort, right? Some sort of expansion or whatever extension. They, they're not going to leave that hanging. So if I was to ex if I was to improve the current Armor Core 6, which would be the, the way to go, I would put less of an emphasis on I'm, I put less of an emphasis in general on stagger and let players through their ability to maneuver maneuver. They're gonna take damage, you're taking health. That's already punishment. If you add stagger, you're you're gonna favor the stagger mechanic, and certain builds will be will be more dominant in the future than they would be maneuver uh, maneuverability. You want maneuverability. I would emphasize more so on honestly, I at this point in the series, weapon variety is actually probably your best bet. So the only improvement I want to see, because I wouldn't get rid of the auto lock feature. I mean, it's here. I will take more so a page from Gundam Versus. If you're going to take a page from Gundam Versus, at least take pages from Gundam Versus and go wholesale. More weapon part variety. We, like, we really, really are starved of long range weaponry. We are starved of, uh, of emphasis on maps. We are starved essentially for things that are not just machine guns, songbirds, and tanks, or heavies. You know, it would be nice to have a little bit more psychology, a little bit more, um, I would say power variety already, as we've done it. Essentially, my mean psychology is essentially, at least with a variety of different parts that are a lot more applicable at different ranges, players are now forced to kind of seek each other out, even in duels, instead of just pressing forward and rushing and jousting at one another. I mean, cover would, you know, cover range combat as a bit more um, a strategy than having these open maps that are like four by four feet and you just blitz at each other in, in a circle, like, because it's a circular map. Like, that's, I mean, it's extremely popular for a reason, and it's because, again, there's no, like, structural differences between, like, one height and another. So, without variance, you essentially just have a straight map. You know, you have, like, a flat terrain. And with auto-locking, that, that, that's something you don't want to do. So, I would suggest an improvement is to add more cover. 
a lot more concealment, a lot more ways for players to break each other's lock, and a lot less ways to get rushed. If you get rushed, then you get rushed. That's fine. It's just make it where it's rewarding to not get rushed. And that requires scaring other players with weaponry that will either punish them for doing so or reward you for playing range. And get rid of, or at least reduce stagger. The best aspect without a doubt is a single player campaign. From the characters you will like seeing, the lore that adds to world building, and the plot that keeps unfolding, which will leave you guessing what's really going on. It's clear from soft one to leave a good impression for new and returning players. The stack of our mechanics my least favorite aspect about AC6. In single player, it didn't bother me since the AI was not smart enough to exploit it, but in PvP, it's a whole different story. It's so quick to build in matches that it almost becomes a stun lock race. I just wish it wasn't so easy to build and it took more work to stagger your opponent, especially if you had high altitude stability or defense performance. For improvements, I would like the stagger bar to not build so quickly. Obviously, heavier weapons should do high stun rays, but regular weapons should not have my stagger bar all the way, you know, halfway. Perhaps more than four times to also do a quick boost. Those are my ideas. The best aspect of Armored Core 6 would probably be the quality of life. In the past titles, you had to go back to the garage to edit your AC while testing it, but with A6 you can edit it on the fly, along with weapons having video demos to see what each weapon does, which wasn't a thing in the past games, along with proper tutorials. Easily the best improvement they made to the series. The worst aspect of Armored Core 6 I think is hard to nail down, but I'll try aiming for a broader answer, which I think is them not taking much risk with this title when it comes to its customization and mechanics. They did bring back some things from past titles, but a lot was lost and not much was offered to replace what was lost. I think for me they pivoted a little too much into it being a safe action game with a boss focus, whereas in the past that wasn't really a thing and the series had a more happy medium between action game and shooter with how it played and felt. How I could see from soft improving on the next title would be them going and re-examining why people enjoyed their previous games and still talking debate about the customization and mechanics to this day. I feel like them trying to please the old fan base and new fan base will never lead to Armored Core truly going above and beyond the past games. Hello, my name is Pacoel. I'm an old gen player. I've played the PS1 and the PS2 games and uh, I have over a hundred hours on all of the achievements in uh, Armored Core 6. The only thing I really like about the game is the ability to shoot four weapons at the same time. But mainly because uh, I come from a SLAI background and that is a great mech game. But other than that, um, I think the game is flawed to its core and uh, all of these new systems that are there to uh, appease to the new western Dark Soul player base. Uh, just kind of hurt it a lot because uh, you have the uh, the turning speed not being there, so everybody just turns the same. You only care about like your boost speed. Uh, you have the stagger system, which is just the Sekiro bar, which is actually obnoxious to deal with. It's like, oh, well, this guy just did this much damage, so I'm gonna just get staggered and eat shit. Or, oh, hey, uh, this guy's staggered, I can actually do damage. It's, it's terrible and then you have the uh, just the music of the game just like like you know how like every other game uh, you just have this like this music that is like yeah this is armor core this is what armor core sounds like it in this one it's just mid like it does it sounds like your generic Western triple a game that recently came out it doesn't sound original i don't know why they did it my advice to franco from from the future games is for them to just like look back at old gen and don't appeal to westerners the main thing about this game is just that it tried to appeal to westerners and in doing so it just hurt the main audience of the game on top of you know adding all of these uh systems that are straight out of Dark Souls and Elden Ring, which I think is just, it doesn't belong here, so please stop doing that. In my opinion, I think the best aspect of AC6 is probably going to be the boss side. After all, the franchise for a long time just relied on bosses that simply stay still and shoot directly on the player. 
a good example of this is the spider from the sewers in AC3 or maybe the Nautilus from Silent Line that just stay there and act like a turret. So the franchise up, up until this point rarely had bosses with interacting attack patterns aside from a very few exceptions like Phantasma from Project Phantasma or, or Nightball Seraph. I think the worst aspect of AC6 is that the gameplay has very few and very weak defensive options while the offensive ones are really strong. This basically just forces the player into one of two viable strategies, one of them being overwhelming the opponent with the highest, def highest defenses and highest DPS weapons you can get, or trying to stay out of the attack range and just poke. Which is paradoxical because the game is supposed to be all about discovering unique combat styles using the game customization as a tool for it to do so. But the, few, the fact that it has so many few viable alternatives really contradicts that idea. The best way from cool improve the next game in the franchise is I think it would probably be by balancing the economy of defense and offense. Uh, they could nerf the really strong offensive alternatives like Harlock or the Stagger. Or they could add new defensive tools or strengthen the already existing ones. For example, they could add uh, a way to cancel the Stagger like, like Project Phantasma did with Wine or give the frame invisibility frames to the shin boosting that could probably counteract the, the problems of Harlock. By far the best aspect of AC6 is the single player campaign. I love the story and characters. That's something I've never really cared about before in past AC games. My favorite character has to be Walter though. Getting the alternate endings and missions were fun, not an absolute chore like Last Raven. I love the bosses as well, with the highlight for me being Ibis. I know some people think the bosses in AC6 were too soulsy. I can kind of see that, but I didn't really feel it all that much. They, I, I think they worked really well. They even managed to do a gimmick boss fight that was actually pretty fun and not boring or incredibly annoying. I think the most memorable moment for me was uh, getting my ass kicked by Ibis and then proceeding to kick its ass with the janky hitbox chainsaw. I'm also happy to see the return of a proper arena, even expanding on it by uh, unlocking new fights and stuff in New Game Plus. I thought they paced that really well. I also like how they kind of reintroduced hover legs, with it being tied to quads. I'd like to see hovers fully reintroduced, but uh, I, I, I think they did that pretty well. The worst aspect of AC6 is definitely the PvP. I'm not the biggest fan of how the gameplay was changed, but I think it works well enough for the single player part of the game. However, it does not translate well at all into the PvP. It essentially boils down to becoming a stagger race, which doesn't exactly feel the most fun or rewarding. It greatly hinders the build variety too, since you're pretty much forced into having a build that can constantly pump out damage. The lack of turn speed also doesn't help that, since you're pretty much forced into always having the enemy in your sights, there's no real way to properly utilize cover or even make a pop shot or even long range builds. Older games like Four Answer and Verdict Day had so many different ways to move around or just to outmaneuver your opponent, from Four Answers absolutely crazy breakneck speed and freedom of movement to verdict days while jumping cover hopping and making use of scan mode to not even just scan the enemy's weaknesses but also manage your energy consumption it always felt like there was a way to outsmart or outmaneuver your opponent and i hope that kind of depth comes back to the pvp scene at the very least i love to see fromsoft continue the style of campaign since i think they really nailed that part However, I definitely want to see a return of mechanics that are sorely missing from 6. Lack of weapon arms, HUD customization, turn speed and general movement mechanics make the game feel like it's lacking the depth that even the PS1 games had. I understand that they wanted to streamline things for new players, but I feel like they went a bit overboard in some regards to that. 
overall I did very much enjoy AC6 despite my criticisms and I'm, I'm just happy to see them return to Armored Core of all things. I hope they continue to build upon and approve upon it in the future. Well, the best aspect I see of uh, Armor Core 6 is um, its cohesiveness, its overall cohesiveness and simplicity. It's uh, it's easy to pick and play. I mean, it's a it's a game above all things. Anyone can pick it up and play. It became a great point of entry for most modern audiences that weren't really aware of. From software's other games before their before the, they became such a mainstream company, such are actually such a mainstream developer with their Souls games. I would say that its worst aspect is the the overall balancing and and uh, progression on parts being unlocked on the store I mean by new game plus in the first in your first run through the game uh, you will have most of the stuff in the store already unlocked and I think that at least in a, from a single player from a PvE uh, standpoint Armor Core works a lot better when you when you have incentives to play uh, bigger incentives to keep playing by unlocking parts and realizing hey you know I uh, wow I had no idea that I could use this part or this missile or this weapon to do X thing or any amount of things that that turns out that you won't you won't really understand or know if you unlock something like the Sombers from very early on in the game and you can simply stick to them for most of your playthrough through the game and never had to to get out of your comfort zone and I think that's uh, that's something that really <clears throat> I think that's something that matters a lot because uh, there needs to be some internal incentives internal motivations for people to to experiment with the things in the game because to be honest most people will serve will simply default to the most overpower uh, type of combination of weapons or setup inst and won't allow their creativity to dictate how will how they will play the game and it also strengthens uh, future replays through the game because, well, since you don't you don't have access to the most overpower stuff as you go along, just like in all gens, uh, you have to plan out what you're going to do depending on what you plan to do. I mean, you you're going to do a heavy run, a heavy build run, or heavy biped. I don't know. Uh, you have to you have to plan out accordingly on what you're going to pick and what you might have to be using on the meantime while you are waiting to unlock some other parts or some other weapons. Wow, well, uh, for third question, basically what you would you what I already said, uh, they would need to improve the balancing of the of the weapons, not just that the overall numbers, but uh, be more creative with the with the way they designed stuff in the game. I mean, I got the feeling that they weren't, they didn't took a lot of risks with uh, with the possible interactions between many of the mechanics that plays into the game. Uh, a lot of things are very reliant on staggering, which uh, with, with the ACS system, which I don't, I don't think it's particularly bad. I think they can. Uh, they just need to tweak it, tweak it a little bit to make it work. Maybe I would say remove other stuns, other forms of stuns or hit stuns for for uh, the weapons and enemies. Make it all uh, related to ACS so that you can reliably tell that if your ACS bar isn't filling up. Uh, you're not gonna get staggered 
unlike how it works right now in the game where some where sometimes you can get staggered by kicks even if your AC is far is in the field and um, and uh, probably a bit more interactions between the systems they already have I mean stuff like I don't know why why won't they let players do kicks while quick boosting instead of simply forcing us to uh, kick only after assault boosting you know I think those are those are where uh, crazy interactions they could do or do stuff like uh, <coughs> do more crazy stuff like well everyone has also already said it and i agree that more parts more modular parts on the parts that are already there extensions like the ones in all gen or inside parts for the cores maybe a reworking of the core expansions because as as i see it right now uh, only uh, i only see a soul armor I default to a soul armor for the most part. The other, the other abilities have their uses, but the jack of all trades that almost always works is a soul armor. Outside of the campaign, I think reverse joints were the best part of Armor Core Six. They were just really fun to use. The worst part about Armor Core Six was the lack of depth in the game. You can look at tuning, for example. It's not really tuning like in for Answer or Last Raven for example, it's just like a skill tree in 6 But when you look at like Last Raven, you look at like each part would have a like, specific tuning that you would do And you're basically like either you put in like for example more energy defense But then you don't have enough points for like ballistic defense It's like this whole trade-off thing with tuning and that was like a, that added a, a whole layer of uh, customization you look at no long-range weapons like cypress or railguns, and then overall the pool of parts is pretty small. It's like four levels of small. How should FromSoft improve the next AC game? I mean, it's pretty obvious what they should fix with what I said in the last question. So just add proper tuning, add more parts, add actual long-range stuff in the game besides missiles, and fix the stupid stack system, please. I think as someone who's replayed all of the Armored Cores again this year to prepare for <laughs> Armored Core 6, uh, the best aspect I can think of for Armored Core 6 is its accessibility to new people. I think in order to prove to publishers like Bandai Namco that games like this are worth it to invest in in the future, From Software really had to build things not necessarily from the ground up, I think we can mostly agree that a lot of their older games like Dark Souls, Sekiro, have definitely affected the new gameplay of the latest iteration of Armored Core in order essentially to get more people on board. And I think that was a good move, no matter what anyone says. Armored Core 6 is probably the most successful Armored Core ever and might be because of From Software just being just a powerhouse name right now but also overall I don't think anyone can really argue that as a game whether or not you played old Armored Cores or you started with Armored Core 6 the game in itself is just it's it's fun I think it's good the controls are tight for the most part and if you're someone new trying to get into Arvin Core I really think 6 is a good jumping off point this one I wish I could articulate better because it has been a while since I last played the game already since I platinumed it and got my kicks out of the PvP I think they got a little too cute with the boss fights. Meaning in general, the boss fights being very much um, essentially Souls boss fights or Sekiro boss fights. I'm gonna keep repeating that because its greatest strength is also I think its greatest weakness where because they designed it in such a way that really borrows from their 
more modern games, I think AC's identity for that portion in particular, because we've had boss fights before in older Armored Cores, technically speaking. Whether it was against another AC, an MT, uh, the weird alien things in 5th gen, there, d there wasn't really, um, technically, uh, this whole Souls-like pattern. It's gonna be really hard for me to not say that. It's just um, because of that game design that they've implemented for 6, kind of loses its identity a little bit as an Armored Core game. Because once you fight one of the bosses or you see one of the bosses and that health bar pops up, you just think, oh, I, it's, a, it's a Souls boss. So, kind of a cop-out answer, but yeah, again, greatest strength, also greatest weakness, etc, etc. I think a general rebalancing of the systems, if they make a sequel um, to 6, so not a DLC, just a new game entirely. If they're gonna keep things like the ACS and the, and the bosses the way they are, uh, it's a very nebulous answer, but balancing it would be a start, I think. I unfortunately don't have anything concrete for that. Uh, but in addition, at least, I also try to get back some of its old AC identity and not just, um, I th and I think this is uh, true for some people, that it really is just uh, a Souls game with the Armored Core skin slapped onto it. And while it does have enough of, it, of its own unique systems that it's not entirely that, um, I still think it needs a bit more AC, if that makes sense. But also the, that delicate balancing act of keep uh, keep its identity, but also keep uh, make it more accessible to more people. So it's a hard thing to do, and I don't have a concrete way of describing it either right now. So I feel like Armored Core Six's best feature might just be the moment-to-moment -moment action. I know that sounds very broad, but let me elaborate. The visual presentation audio design, combat flow and responsiveness of the controls, all come together to form something that is completely unique even when compared to the series' own standards. Sure, this is a highly streamlined Armored Core game in more than one way, but the core gameplay loop, even if substantially simplified, is just so addicting and satisfying. I think they really nailed how the AC should move and react to everything this time around, so much so, that even the mech genre initiates will feel compelled with the experience. This is hands down the best onboarding title for the franchise, and that's its major strong suit. Everything feels premium and highly curated, like every cent of the development budget was allocated meticulously towards the right goals. In the end, I guess one could say Armored Core 6's best aspect is how incredibly polished and focused it is. Hey hey, it's Rekanum here. The one thing I like the most about AC6 is how smooth and natural the controls feel when everything works. I managed to play about 200 hours of PvE, I keep playing PvP in metas that I don't even like for that reason alone. I just love the feel of the game so much. The worst time I've been having with here is against Nebulous, LCDs, and Lazy Swappers. What they all have in common is having a very low downtime and an extreme punish for misstepping and stopping the movement, be it burst damage or impact. That in mind, the mobility options available to us just don't feel like they are on par with what's required, in part due to those weapons being attacker sided. The most important thing from Softcore theoretically do is have a more active approach to post-release balancing. I understand that it's a hard ask for an endeavor that makes no money, but I would gladly pay a subscription fee to access the nest if that meant quick thought fixes and frequent balance patches. I'm relatively new to the Armored Core series, but the best aspect of it so far for me uh, has to be the PvP, or more specifically, the actual combat experience. Um, it's just a great feeling to be able to create your own personalized playstyle uh, in some limited capacity uh, and then have that translate to fluid gameplay and responsive combat, which FromSoft always manages to make their games feel good to play, 
and Armored Core 6 definitely embodies that aspect of their game design philosophy. As far as the worst aspect of Armored Core 6, I would have to say that the balancing philosophy for the game is a bit weak. I've played thousands upon thousands of hours in pretty much every single FromSoft title, and they always have this problem where they can't seem to decide whether to balance for PvE or PvP, and as a result, the communities for both end up suffering. Especially considering how little support PvP already historically has in these games, it's just frustrating to see them repeat these mistakes again in Armored Core. I think that um, in the next Armored Core game, From Shop, FromSoft should be more transparent with the community, taking more community feedback, or at least just having the option there, like opening the lines of communication for those who are more passionate uh, and those people who would spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours in their games. Um, as far as the game itself, I think that having more support for multiplayer and social functions within the game would be nice. Um, like a PvE co-op game mode or something. There are just a lot of people who would love to play this game in a cooperative setting with friends, and I would love to see support for the people who would love to see that. Aside from that, there's really not much else for me to complain about. Um, the gameplay is just really nice, and the story is nice, and the music's nice. Um, I just really don't have a lot of complaints. Alright, so, Armored Core 6. The best aspects of Armored Core 6. Uh, oddly enough, the melee combat. I really love doing the CQC stuff. It's unfortunately also the worst part of Armored Core 6. The stagger system is... It's questionable. It's very questionable. It's It looks great. It feels great to do. It feels terrible to be done to you. It's... It's an odd choice. I don't know why they went with it. As for how they should improve on the next game... I think the stagger system could work. But they needed to... Be either you need to have it as a choice, not as a end all be all. I mean, right now there are builds that can do that sort of thing, like the kites. Generally, they don't stagger you and still kill you. They, they kill you generally by DPS rather than or DPM rather than just burst, like say Rat Knight or Zims or something like that. They, they need to give you the choice. They need to, like, almost double the time to kill in stagger, as they have right now. At least that's my opinion. The Armored Core series has always been a customization-based shooting game. For most players, especially when they first start playing, that's the meat of it. But eventually you have a build you enjoy, and you've painted your mech, and probably you're still hungry. What I love about AC6 is once you get past the decision paralysis of what to play, how to play is even more complex. I've got around 1200 hours of PvP, but I still learn new things basically every week. Like, just getting comfortable with all the ways you can move on one frame is a challenge, and then, <laughs> surprise, there's what, six different styles of movement you can choose from? Layer that with energy management and weapon choice, and the decision space is huge. To me, that's what makes this game great. AC6 is very obviously bolted together from previous assets. The hit registration isn't optimized for a game with this many degrees of freedom. A uh, ton of core gameplay mechanics just don't work across some standard user workflows. Uh, an easy example of that is trying to instant guard while pressing anything besides forward only works if you're hard locked. Uh, go figure. Um, finding matches can be difficult, even with ranked implemented I've basically just given up trying to do anything besides discord or ranged scrimmages and tournaments. Basically. The game is missing intentionality and quality of life, which makes sense given how little past Armored Core games have made. But hopefully, with the runaway financial success of Armored Core 6, we see something with a little more attention to detail come out next time. In my opinion, team play is the future of Armored Core. It's so much more engaging and the styles of Mexican field successfully are way larger than it is in singles. 
I'd be extremely happy to see team-based PvP made a central theme of future AC games. The best aspects of Armored Core 6 would have to be its story, characters, soundtrack, level design, world building, and bosses. For the story, I thought it was one of the best stories in quite a while that I've played for any video game. I felt as if all the characters, even the ones I hated, all felt like actual people to some degree. For the soundtrack, I really enjoyed the soundtrack. I felt as if it really fit the game. There were some aspects where I was disappointed in, but I was mostly hoping for remixes to be included in the game, but that's kind of whatever. Uh, for the level design, I felt like all the levels were actually really fun, and there was a bunch of like little things in them that you would have never noticed until like your second or third playthrough if you were just exploring. I enjoyed that part. And uh, when it came to the bosses, I really enjoyed the bosses. I thought we were getting something like a uh, fourth gen or fifth gen for bosses, but either way, I still really enjoyed them. I would say the worst aspects of Armored Core 6 would have to be its average weapon balancing and average parts balancing. Uh, I felt as if on release and currently, a lot of the parts are either poorly balanced and uh, some are overtuned to some degree. When it came to the parts, I felt as if it was lacking in too many areas. I felt as if there was not enough uh, orbital weapons. Uh, I would have loved to see a linear orbital, like in a silent mine or something along those lines. Just, I felt like there was a lot of weapons that could have been made in other things, but uh, they just simply weren't. And uh, the net code, uh, that's a big one. I really want them to fix net code because getting uh, destroyed by laggy pile bunkers all the time in PvP. Uh, it's not overly fun. How I feel FromSoft should improve the next Armored Core game is lightweights either should be given more mobility or a better way to survive being stunned. I feel as if there should be more weapon varieties added to Armored Core, such as weapon arms and or more linear weapons, more coral weapons, and the like. I felt as if it was lacking in a lot of parts, but that could be changed with the next Armored Core. And I would love to see uh, either some form of coral orbits or some form of coral machine gun or something along those lines. I feel as if that would add to the game in some way. I, I would have loved to have 4th gen and 5th gen style bosses as I said before. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be multiplayer, but it can be single player. Uh, stuff like Mother Will or the LLL. Those would be fun to fight. An optional co-op mode would also be fun, and as well as the ability to and the ability to queue up for ranked matches with your friends would also be fun. All right, so Striker with a Y, the gamer who stole my name without asking, by the way. Um, has some questions for me because they're putting together an Armored Core Six video. And they're asking what the best aspect of Armored Core 6 is. What do you think the best aspect of Armored Core 6 is? Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure. There's a lot of really good aspects to talk about. Like, one, just how intuitive it is. Like, the assembly and stuff like that. Decals? The decals, oh my god, that actually might be it. Because the, the customization system in Armored Core 6 is absolutely absurd. Like, if you ever watch, like, a Moby Armored Core Drift video, you'll see just, like, dang. These two ACs are the exact same parts, but they look wildly different. Because one person took 700 years designing their AC with decals and like different paint schemes, and different material types, and weathering and everything like that. And this person just has like the default paint scheme. And it's really interesting. Just like if you look at a perfect example, Strider and Misery Index. Strider's, uh, I think it's called like Zimmy Gonzalez or whatever. It's kind of a silly name. And then you have like Misery Index. If they're at the exact same parts, like the exact same parts, but if we're next to each other, they look completely different, and I love that. Especially coming from the competitive scene, where a lot of builds are very similar. Where like you have your, like your Zim shields, you have your quad shotguns, you have your like JP lambs, uh, every, everything in that. Like you have all of these different competitive builds, and they all look so drastically different. It's like look at uh, Takafumi's build, which is like this very sleek black, um, you know, aggressive tank, aggressive boat. And then you have Nova's like really cool purpley swirly boat. Like it's a, they're the exact same builds, but they look so wildly different. It's awesome. 
Accessibility? Accessibility is definitely up there as well. Like, it is, it is a very easy game to get into, even though it is a FromSoft game, which I think is really cool. Honestly, it might be the easiest From Software game to get into, like, PvE-wise. I think that's really dope. This is an all-around all good game. There's no single best part. I, I think the community is also a really good part of the game, because, like, it's crazy to me that the game's been out for, like, eight months or whatever the heck, and we I've had to ban, like, four people from my chat. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that does not happen. It definitely doesn't happen in Souls. I banned so many people back when I was a Souls streamer, because good god, that community is crazy. But, like, the community is so nice, and they're so welcoming with, like, new players and stuff. We just added a new channel to my Discord. You don't have to add the Sin Striker because it's kind of a self-plug. But, like, we had the new Discord, uh, we had a new channel on my Discord that's just called Match Advice. People just upload their VODs, and they say, hey, you should do this better, you can do this better. And people listen, and they, like, are like, yeah, that makes sense. I should be doing that. Or they're like, hey, why do you have this on your build? It doesn't really work with the rest of your kit. You should change that. They're like, you're right, I should change that. And then they change it, and it's better. And they have more fun with the video. It's awesome. How about fluidity? That's a, that's another good point. It, the game just feels really good to play. That's why a lot of people put up with, like, the really bad netcode and shit. It's just because, like, there's no other game like it on the market besides maybe Damon X Machina. And Damon X Machina is old, and the player base isn't really that big. So, like... It's kind of it's kind of just dope, dude. Like I, I love Armor Core Six. I talk about this forever. And then we have let's see, what's the worst aspect of Armor Core Six? The netcode. The netcode, one thousand percent. Remove anti easy anti cheat. Kill it. Kill it now. Remove easy anti cheat forever. I don't want. I don't want easy anti cheat. Checking every single packet that goes between me and my opponent. That's how it works, by the way. It adds about fifty to sixty ms of latency. I think it like scales with how bad your connection would have been without it because it just makes it take longer to get packets between you and your opponent. It's ridiculous. There's a reason why PlayStation and Xbox have different metas than PC. It's because you can actually dodge lasers and shit over there. But here it's like, L charged LCB comes out, it hits you, well, it's like three billion miles away. Yeah, no, the netcode, the netcode needs to be fixed. How should FromSoft improve the next AC, AC game? Get rid of easy anti cheat. I already, I, I already said it. Just get rid of it. I, I think I think besides that, besides like the poor netcode of the game, I think right hand melee and weapon arms need to come back because that is those are fan favorite additions to the game, and they're just not here, which is weird. Even Armor Core, look, I'm playing Armor Core One right now. Even Armor Core One has weapon arms. Like, look at this. Like arms. Look at this. Like I can excuse right hand melee because like that wasn't in Armor Core One. If it's like a soft reboot for the series, that's fine. You know that's okay. They don't have to include right hand melee because you know if that's the that's the gun arm. You have your gun arm. You have your melee arm. But weapon arms are already here. Like I can put this on my ace here right now and have a good time. But it's just when they don't they're not in Armored Core Six and that makes me really sad. And it's not like it's not possible. Like we can do weapon arms with modding and stuff. It's some weird jank way of like making the hand, the arm units disabled and just like putting invisible weapons on there. But like, you can do it. it it's possible with modding. So like, they could have, they could have definitely have done it with from software. But yeah, I uh, I really want weapon arms back. I want right hand melee back desperately. Please from software. The melee players are absurd and they are very hungry and I'm very scared for my own life and for yours. The melee players are coming from software. You must you must sit you must satiate their hunger for melee tech. <laughs> Develop an in-house anti-cheat and add dedicated servers or better dead code. Honestly, KTN, just give me $5 a day and I'll go on the servers and be like, that guy's cheating, die. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it from software. Hit me up. I'll, I'll, make it, I'll make it a thing on the stream. I'll make a channel in Discord to say like, hey, report cheaters here. And I'll go, ah, that guy's cheating. I see. You sent me video evidence. It's like just... I'll be your I'll be your anti cheat. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> Doctor Manhattan, their asses. Yes, exactly. Yeah, easy, easy anti cheat. How they how they've uh, put it on their game? How they've installed easy anti cheat into Armored Core Six? You can bypass it by just playing on Linux. Did y'all know this? You can boot your game on the Linux operating system, and easy anti cheat will pop up and then crash, and then the game will launch anyway. Which means you can use Cheat Engine, you can use modded clients, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And they can't stop you. Easy Anti-Cheat won't detect you, it won't even ban you. You'll have to get reported by another player. Yeah. Unfortunate.
just unfortunate. Anyway, Striker, hopefully that's answered your three questions. Hey, Striker. Uh, I'll try to keep this quick this time. So, the best aspect of Armored Core 6 for me is the sheer amount of control and freedom you have over your movement and aim because of things like the lack of turn speed uh, and having a mouse and keyboard input. Those, those two things are great. I love mechanics that give maximal control to players, impose very demanding challenges on them, and give them huge rewards for meeting those challenges. That stuff is awesome. The worst aspect of Armored Core 6 for me is the exact flip side of that. So they give you all this freedom and control, and then they turn around and take it away, because if you think about it, what is the... with aiming, for instance, your... your lockbox is literally the size... is literally your entire screen. So you have all of this freedom and control, and then they say, alright, with all of that, your challenge is keep your enemy somewhere on your screen. Like, are you kidding me? And then you have hard lock on top of that, which just does that for you. So... That, cre that creates a real big problem for FromSoft to solve, where it, in order to prevent lightweights from getting constantly obliterated by heavy weapons, because, you know, in the old games it was like, to stop yourself from getting obliterated by heavy weapons, you escaped lock-on. Well, you can't do that in Armored Core 6. You can't escape someone's entire screen. Like, the movement's not that crazy. So they have to make it so that while, you know while your enemy is locked onto you, his lock-on is still dysfunctional because you can't really escape the lock-on. Uh, so, from the attacker's point of view, it's very frustrating because you, you can have your AC oriented exactly right, the gun's pointed right at the guy, uh, your, you know, your targeting reticle is right on him, you've got a full lock-on, and somehow the shot still misses. Why? Because there has to be this random, contrived dysfunction in targeting to prevent uh, lightweights from getting vaporized all the time because you, they can't escape the lock-on. Uh, and it's the same thing with movement. There's a bunch of stuff that takes away, takes control out of your, takes movement control out of your hands, like poise breaking and stagger and how you have to sit there and watch this anime cutscene of someone bashing your face in for eight seconds with a giant fidget spinner. Uh, I... I really don't like those aspects of this game. There are many, many aspects of this game that I really, really like. Uh, but the, the, all the contrived limitations on players' ability to control the game and express skill, I feel like there are a lot of places where they just put sort of hard, they tried to put hard caps on the amount of skill expression that's available. And it's really annoying because Armored Core has always been a game about you know, it's part garage and it's part piloting. And the idea is that you can, you know, you can build something. There are always going to be different strength tiers, but you can build something that meshes with you as a pilot. And then the rest of it, you can make up for by expressing skill as a pilot. So I would like to see that return some more. I would really like to see the, li the limitations to player control removed. Uh, i also like to see Hardlock go away forever. Uh, so I'll leave that there. See ya, Striker. Alright, testing. One, two, three. <laughs> what is the best aspect of Armor Core 6? Honestly, the only thing I could think of is just the campaign. It's probably the better out of the series. And there's new faces now, since, since there's a new game. But that's legitimately it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. What's the worst aspects of the game? Uh, PvP is pretty bad. Uh, the game always has, like, the series have always had some type of RPS, but there's always been ways to deal with it, right? Like, of course, you could have some bad matchups, but they were winnable in previous games, to a degree. In this game, if you have, like, a bad matchup, it's like an 8 2 9 1 in their favor. You're, there's a good chance you're not winning, unless you heavily grind the matchup. And ranked just amplifies everything I've said about like why well, I don't like build lock or anything. Like ranked is build lock. That's what it is. And <laughs> holy shit, it's so bad. Um, I don't like stagger. Stagger's a terrible mechanic. Just to lose like, almost insta die just because you get staggered one time. Sometimes in cases you do just insta die. 
That's pretty terrible. Hard lock is a mistake. I understand why they did it, because there's no turn speed in the game. So you need it for like controller players. But I hate it I hate both. They should have no they should have turn speed back in the game and they should remove hard luck. Um but people can argue. A PC game with hard luck? I don't know how I feel about that. Look at Mech Warrior and look at um Gundam Operations. They do an okay job. Uh what else do I not like? No ranged options. Pretty terrible. Like the longest ranged options you have is a missile. Like what's up with that? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. A charged LCB shot that can randomly lag hit you across the map. Well, not across the map, but... <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, that's about it. Uh, what else? In the community. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, that should be my first thing. We got a lot of new faces because it's a new release, but we just... Man. <laughs> Armor Quartz has, has always had like a lot of interesting characters. But dude, I... I hate the new community. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> um, what should FromSoft improve in the next game? AC game? Hmm. All the things I just mentioned. Remove Hardlock, add turn speak back into the game, give us ranged options. I feel like the game can be slower. Like, we don't need the game to be like 4 answer. I and mean, I don't think we need the game to be like fucking uh, 6. Um, how slow though? I think third gen had a pretty good tempo. Uh, I think here. Do you, <laughs> do more playtesting. Don't make PvP an afterthought. Like, it's it's very clear that they had barely any playtesting with the multiplayer. Their focus was the campaign, and it shows because the campaign's fine. Like, it's a good campaign. Like, look what we typically get. You know? Um, campaign's fine. It's good. And it just PvP just felt like an afterthought. Like, why did the game come out with ranked in day one? If we're, if the game came out ranked in day one, anyth everything I've argued about for months would have seen, like, the spotlight. Instead of people like, we don't care about turns. This shit doesn't apply to us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it feels like the game is sort of rushed. I don't know. It's more playtesting. And, um... Better PvP experience, do the things I suggested. And uh, maybe we'll have a better player base by then. I don't know. That's all I got. The best thing about AC6 is the fan art of Air. I don't know if you guys know this, but the fan base has taken this little moat of red light and added tits to it. It's incredible. You wouldn't believe the imagination of the community. It might be easy to find drawings of Jacko in a Speedo, but that's about it for AC fan art. AC6 has sparked an awakening in this community, comparable to a second puberty. The worst thing about AC6 is hard to quantify. My explanation will either make sense or it won't, and I don't give a shit. There is not a single other AC game I can read chat while playing PvP. Hardlock is a crutch. No turn speed is unimmersive. No input to quick turn is unimmersive. Old AC felt like trying to wrestle a hunk of steel, but AC6 feels like playing a cutscene. It's amazing in single player, it's a power fantasy and makes your mech feel special, but I don't find the multiplayer as compelling as older iterations. For improving the next AC title, I guess I have two roots. Route 1 is improving on 6. I do this by increasing the time to kill and lengthening battles. Stagger can be removed completely. Fun experiment, maybe a good demonstration of the game engine's capabilities, and it might be good for some boss fights, but as a universal system, I don't think it fits in Armored Core. Removing control for extended periods on top of extra damage feels pretty terrible. Ultimate Zenaida route fix would be the return of turn speed, the complete removal of hardlock, and a return to the hardcore mercenary simulator that Armored Core used to offer. Losing money on a mission should be a real possibility. 
It's pretty hard for me to put to words what FromSoft should do for the next AC game. I was wrong about 4th gen at the time. I was wrong about 5th gen when it came out. But with all my years of experience, I don't think I'm wrong about 6th generation. You can look this up for yourselves. Armor Core 6 is an overblown game engine tech demo for investors released at the earliest viable state with minimal investment. I hope it's only a footnote in this decades long series. I hope they bring back the more hardcore immersive mechanics and I hope that we aren't committed to the AC6 formula for too long. Armored Core has seen many changes and I wouldn't mind a few more. What is the best aspect of Armored Core 6? You know, without a doubt, it has to be the boss fights. You know, FromSoft has a lot of experience of creating, you know, fun and challenging encounters. They definitely nailed the presentation and the mechanics of most fights in the game. Uh, that's all I can say, really. What's the worst part of Armored Core 6? Yeah, the, the removal of turn speed. The fundamental playstyle of Armored Core is shooting the enemy AC at an angle they can't shoot back. This strat helps out lightweight players immensely because they can't, you know, compete head on with their low defense and firepower, so they can, you know, use their movement to get behind the slower, heavier AC and just unload rounds of ammo. Uh, but the problem is, a Armored Core 6 removed this playstyle completely. The only viable way to play a lightweight is to build the kite slash rad and just time out your opponents, which is very boring for both players. How should FromSoft improve in the next AC game? Bring back extensions, inside parts, snipers, and just more long range weapons in general, and, uh, and also just add a lockbox. Uh, so for me, this again, this is Cleric uh, with Cleric Armored Core. Uh, answering these three questions. Number one, uh, what is the best aspect of Armored Core 6? That's an easy one for me. Uh, my intention for these answers is to be a little more nuanced. And I'm going to look at very gritty, detailed information specifically for what I consider the best and worst and things of that nature. So for the best aspect, hands down, it is the garage assembly and testing apparatus in this game. I cannot begin to tell you, as someone who's been playing this game since AC once, the demo disc, the garage assembly and the ability to tweak and fine tune and swap out parts and test individual pieces is so good in Armored Core 6. It's so good. It's just, it's unbelievably good. Um, to give you a reference point in all the previous games, you go to the garage or your assembly and you can change parts and tweak parts and all of those things, get in and out. And then you'd have to leave you the garage and then go to test. And once you go to test, you have to pick what you want the test to be. Do you want it to be empty? Do you want an AI in there? Do you want MT in there? Do you want AC in there? You have to pick all those things. We had to all pre-select it. And then you go into the test and the test would be done if you quit or if you just destroy whatever, you know, enemy you select up in the test thing. Here, in, and you can't change parts. You couldn't do any of those things. In AC6, you can go into a blank arena. Just go right, that's where you start, just a blank test area. You can change the enemies on the fly and they respawn. They, they don't even just like, it's not a one and done, they respawn. You can go in, make them docile or AI controlled and you can change them out on the fly or have nothing. You can go from the testing area, go into your assembly and change up parts mid go and test individual aspects of this game. like. I cannot begin to describe to you the level of quality of life the garage assembly and testing is in this game. It is top notch. It is the best hands down this series has ever had. It's not even remotely close. Armor Core 6, when it comes to the ability to test and swap out parts and see how they function in this game, are leaps and bounds ahead better than any of the previous games. And honestly, I think it's the single best aspect of Armor Core 6. Now for the worst aspect of Armor Core 6. This might require a little bit of context, but the answer for that is easy is no, no cross-platform. That is 
easily the worst part of Armor Core 6. Now, I realize being a FromSoft title cross-platform was probably never going to happen, but to me, it's a bigger problem for Armor Core than this for other games. To give you a little bit of context, plays up to this point, PlayStation 1, AC1 up through Last Raven was only on PlayStation, then PlayStation 2. For Gens 1, then Gens 2 and 3, 3.5, as people call it, it's through only PlayStation, PlayStation 2. All on one system, all on one platform, easy to organize events and do them. When the PS3 era started with Armored Core 4, you had the split between Xbox and PlayStation. That was a problem for a lot of people because a good number of people played on PlayStation and a good number of people played on Xbox. And so it was hard to hold tournaments, it was hard to hold events because people had it on different systems. That was an issue for that game. And it's an issue that persisted all the way through up until modern era. And it's even worse now in Armored Core 6 because now you have PC and PlayStation and Xbox. You have three. That makes it way worse. And the reason I was like, well, that's well, okay, no, no cross platform. Of course, there isn't going to be. You understand, though. When it comes to things from From Software like Elden Ring or Dark Souls, they have the privilege of having huger, much larger bases to work off of. Now, you have your hardcore faithful in those games. We're going to keep playing it and keep doing invasions, keep doing online, doing videos, and things of that nature, or events, because they love those series and those fan bases are huge. I realize Armor Core 6 is by far the most successful selling game they've ever had in their series. Doesn't change the fact that it's still very niche. Still extremely niche, even with a, even with a much broader audience, a new audience, it is still very niche. It's always been very niche. Our niche just got ever so slightly bigger. And the fact that there's no cross-platform affects Armor Core more because those individual other games have player bases that are larger if you were to combine the active player base of Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam for Armored Core 6, it would probably still be smaller than the active Elden Ring community just on PC. Just on PC alone, it'd probably be smaller. Those three great group bases combined. And so, but what little player base we're already working off of that consistently plays the game, stretching it even smaller by splitting it into thirds makes it so much worse. So yeah, hands down the worst aspect of Armored Core 6 because it's such a small niche gathering of fandom is the fact that it was cross-platform. That hurt this game in unimaginable ways and in ways that wouldn't affect other games or other titles. How should From Software improve the next AC game? Easy, tuning. Uh, I, I, this might be a, um, again, a very, a very nuanced thing, but at the same time, it's just, Man, when they introduced tuning in Nexus, and they've had tuning ever since in the game, it's hard to look back. Tuning just allows for so much expression in the design aspect of the game. You can tune for how often you shoot. You can tune for how much more damage you do. You can tune for weight. You can tune for, you know, think about weapons. You can tune for turn speed, you know, for example, for the old, for the old games. You can tune for defense. You can tune for cooling. Imagine Armor Core 6 if you can tune legs like, you know, I want a little more speed on these legs. Actually, these things, I want a little more stability. You know, we actually need a little more defense in this kind of thing. Oh, actually, no, on this one, I need a little more jumping. Imagine if you could do that with the legs. Imagine if you could fine tune the KRSV to just weigh less but have no other changes. Or if you're good with the weight, increase its power or decrease its charge time. All, there's all kinds of things you could do. In the previous games from, like I said, Nexus through birthday, the ability to tune individual aspects and individual parts of the games, just it, it took it to the next level. There's so many more things. It allowed for so much player expression, both in the design and the gameplay aspect, that if they reintroduce tuning in the next Armored Core game, uh, the sky's the limit, even with the mechanics as they are. And look, people are gonna talk about, people are gonna talk about multiplayer, people are gonna talk about netcode, people are gonna talk about lack of parts. Those are, those are the easy things, all right? I'm talking about things that are specific to this game. And I'm telling you, if they add tuning back in, if you just add tuning right now to Armored Core 6, don't change anything else and just add tuning, the game is infinitely better. It just is. It's infinitely better because you have so many more options now. So yeah, if if are to improve the next AC game, hands down, trying to bring back tuning. What is the best aspect of Armored Core 6? Uh... I'd have to give that to the scale and the modeling of detail in the environment. 
it's probably the best the series has ever seen and the way the architecture is depicted in the game it's a massive brutalistic industrial feel it really is probably some of the best work from software's made and the audio design with the gun crackling in the distance and the booster um, vortex and the sounds and the blips of the warning systems. It's some master class when it comes to that. What is the worst aspect of Armored Core 6? Hmm. I'd probably have to give that to... Well, there's three things. The stagger, for one. It, it's a cool and interesting design, but sometimes I just want to play like the legacy of parts of Armor Core, where you just do an arena fight, circling around each other, trying to fire off as many projectiles at each other, and seeing who can outmaneuver their rounds the best and the AP draining down and it comes down to that wire and the other part would be um, the damage for the bosses in the campaign they do a lot more damage than you think it would like some of the small tiny little micro missiles they do a lot more damage than micro missiles in like previous games and they take basically half your health and another part would be stories just weird uh, I mean it's interesting but it's way out there than most Armored Core games actually how should Armored Core improve or from software should improve on their next AC game that I think they could look back to the previous games like the early first second third gen like those are obviously my favorites, but I think they could modernize that. I still think that's a lot of untapped potential they could um, tap into. And I think the audio production team, like the music production of From Software, they didn't get utilized in their creative capacity enough in this one. I love for them to just make pieces of work and let them just design music that they want to do for the game instead of being so strict on the setting and how it's supposed to sound like there's themes to like the previous games but also they are allowed to make some original pieces of work the best thing that Armored Core 6 has got for the series is its popularity Social like genre is on the peak of the charts and the game outperforms previous ent entries. Which is a good thing, considering the amount of sold copies and overall interest of the audience. All that means a lot more new players for the fan base and, in theory, a lot more players for all the gens as well. But all of it was at the cost of Soul of Armored Core series. It's a Souls like, it's a build like one. And considering the last part in Souls Bone series being uh, DS3, which came through a similar process of simplifying and making the overall game and, and the design more friendly for a wider audience, Armored Core 6 may be a good game, but it's not Armored Core as it is. And even after all the old gens, that code is still bad. I see improvement of Armored Core series in making its core similar to those of all the gems, AC4 specifically. For I believe, the sudden change of pace in For Answer, for example, was not as good as the amount of new bots they added and the reward those that were later were in fourth installment. Being slow, punishing, but also not removing the points of the build itself, giving player ability to overcome certain obstacles, which just the right AC, is the way to go. I really appreciate the presentation of Armored Core 6. A lot of the spaces have a ton of depth, and the environments have a lot of destruction that exemplify your AC's power. This merges with excellent animation work to create a really pretty game. 
This is also mixed in with the fact that AC visual customization is amazing, especially with its enhanced decal system that is more nuanced than ever. This allows for such creative expression that is very strong. They nailed it in this respect. That being said, I don't like how squishy ACs are in this game. While the gameplay is designed around its health kits for its single player encounters and bosses, it usually leads to design that either flips from being too easy to do too little damage, to situations where everything does too much damage, and leads to near instant deaths. Combined with the stagger mechanic, it leads to really swingy combat that I feel could be smoothed out. If everything was less lethal, you would have more room to have more nuanced combat. If they give more health to ACs, I feel you could have more opportunities for different playstyles to shine, but more than that, different kinds of parts with more long-range weapons being available would help immensely. Older generations have had similar issues in the past with their first outings, only for that to be fixed in later games. I feel that these issues would absolute I feel that these issues could absolutely be figured out for an amazing sequel, and I'm looking forward to future installments. Well, I'd honestly say the new engine and improved graphics, difficulty increase or story, previous generation armor cores had quite an easy going uh, story, very linear. Great visuals, good aesthetics, and a comeback of the Raven name, so I think that was really nice. I mean, maybe I'm looking at it like an elitist, but I think it's the lowered skill ceiling. You can pick up the game in a week and expect to be a player with 200 plus hours. I don't think that should be a thing. You know, uh, the game is based on quick dodging events, but it's all attacker based. You know, so there are things they could work on to fix. And that's my input on that. Well, FromSoft has had a history when it comes to network coding, latency issues. Um, Armor Core for Answer had a bad and Dark Souls 1 actually had better net coding than Armor Core for Answer, so that says something. However, I think AC6 came a long way, and I think they'll improve more on, you know, the networking, better latency, less issues. I think that's better. So for me, the best aspect of AC6 is its accessibility. This is in terms of multi-platform access, modern controls, and online PvP matchmaking. I'm from the era of having almost no one in my own city to play AC with, so being able to just jump online and play is great. The worst aspect of AC6 for me is the speed balancing. With hard lock and assault boost, heavier ACs are mobile enough to just keep up with lightweights while still having more defense and bigger weapons. I'm hoping that they can still improve on this in future updates. For improvements, I'm thinking they could probably implement co-op or objective-based multiplayer modes, aside from the current one-on-one -on -one or team versus options. Uh, hello Striker, thanks for asking me to give you my opinions on the different parts of just Armored Core 6. Mine's going to be a bit weird because for the best and worst aspect of the game, I actually feel that it's the exact same part. Because one of the best aspects of Armored Core 6 is that they did a whole bunch of things to make it easier for the Souls crowds and the fans of their other styles of games to get into the game and play it. Because one of the biggest issues with the older games was trying to come in and pick up the game with no reference from any other games for how it works, the tons of stats. It was very detailed and great for people who got into it, but wasn't good for getting into the game. Which unfortunately, as someone who's already done all of that, is why I feel that those things they made it easier, like the, like the simpler stats, the gameplay, stagger bar to give them a clear goal during like during combat the hard lock to make it easier I don't like all of that because I like the really complicated things having to actually move properly using all of the text weapon balance and not just zerg rush to stagger and instantly kill someone I feel that that kind of you're not really playing for an AP you're playing for stagger and then as well as that defenses reduce the combat range to the point where 
every fight is either less than 200 or it's not really hitting or working, or it's just someone running away five to ten times past your combat range because missiles, for some un unexplicable reason, go up to like 2,000 range before they die out. As for how I think FromSoft should improve the next game, I think they just really need to fix the combat range. The only option shouldn't be using bad netcode to zerg rush staggers from stupidly short ranges or running away spamming missiles because that's really the only counter to not playing the same way, especially when someone's netcode is eh, and, uh, and they can hit you from your screen past your own combat range because they flew in fast enough. Yeah, if they can get that fixed, just fix the combat range, give us some actual mid-range instead of point-blank and miles away, I think with like the different speeds you can get, that would probably help it out a lot. I think the aesthetics, for sure. I, um, and just let the way they handled the, the mission, I think they're more I don't know, dynamic, they're more interesting than previous games, because I've only played Armored Core 4 and, and 4 Answer, like really got into. Um, I, I ran through Verdict Day pretty quickly, so I, I didn't fully enjoy it. I wasn't fully immersed, but I still enjoyed it. I, I really enjoy the, the story of, of Armored Core 4. I think like it's straight to the point, just the, the lore behind it, everything. I, a quick story, simple, not hard to get. It's I think it's nice. But 6 definitely has just a better overall campaign, uh, objectively speaking. And all that. Oh, but main part uh, aesthetics for me are the aesthetics. I think they got a cool combination of old gen with some new gen parts, and and they look cool. The mechs look cool. A little less retro. They were going with like an old school look, but I, I preferred the, the actual old school look. Like if you look at the the art, it's fantastic. But I think the mechanics are not. You, you have all these like cool ass concepts, and, and you know. Um, mechanics involved in the previous games and it, we have debates over how like what makes this game better than the other you know all these gen wars and then you have six and it's it's a cool game if i was completely new to the series i would i would enjoy fully enjoy it i, I think it's a great game for sure but like knowing that these other games exist and they just threw all these into the garbage and they're like yeah you know i personally enjoy second staging and chain boosting i think it's a they're great mechanics for sure and we all have debates over that for sure but i think they're great and they threw that away then you have everything fifth gen which i also think is great and they just threw that away and then they they implemented stuff from dark souls dude like like what we had this like awesome simulation type you know sim fighting mech game like it, I, it's hard to even describe what armored core was and then they just turned it into dark souls but with mechs you know that's uh, for me that's garbage you know, they got the aesthetics right, but the mechanics, they kind of fucking dropped the ball. Um, and in, it's its smart of them to do that, because they're they are they're tapping into the market that, or the people that they already have with Dark Souls, but they're also competing with games like, you know, Gundam Versus or whatever that game is called, which is, from what I've heard, very popular. Uh, but me as a fan, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that, you know, of their direction. Uh, yeah. You know, from a business standpoint, I think they're they're going the right direction. You know, like they're producing money and creating a product that's not that bad. Uh, but if they want to keep it, you know, to what it was, like I'd say they should not fully sell themselves out and you know be full Dark Souls, full you know let's compete with Gundam and and you know start implementing mechanics from fourth and fifth gen. Because uh, they were really advanced mechanics and implement them into a new game it's in, in a way sharing, you know, I always tell people, you know, how cool would it be while jumping, you know, into a chain boost and, you know, like, uh, I've had a lot of debates, maybe a lot of people might not like me saying that, but I think that's a pretty cool thing to, you know, think about or imagine doing that. That's that sounds kind of cool to me. Just like that sounds like badass, like a badass fight right there. Just like it's fucking, I don't know. But yeah, maybe co combining certain mechanics and applying them again, you know. So for that first question, what is the best aspect of Armored Core Six? The only thing that it does good 
is probably the graphics and the setting that the game puts us in. That's really it. Everything else about the game is generic and dumbed down. And this is where we go to the worst aspect. The lock-on is probably the worst thing right now in the game. If Leary removes any counterplay, the stagger bar removes any versatility or builds. It's just, alright, let me just try to stack up as fast as possible and do the true damage on someone. Not so fun, especially if people are just going to start spamming fucking the little extensions, the little fucking shields to reset the bar. It's like, alright. What's your from software improve in the next AC game? Uh, I'd say just go back to the roots as like old gen and my bias comes in fifth gen, I'd say. They went back to those kind of roads. We would have a better Armored Core game. The best aspect of Armored Core 6 is nothing for me. I don't like the game that much. I'm sorry. The worst aspect of Armored Core 6 for me is that it doesn't feel like I am playing an Armored Core game. So many of the core gameplay mechanics that made AC stand out to me have been gutted from the game. Things like needing the track, turn speed to limit the power of heavies, the freedom of movement, many more. They changed the series with long-standing balance and mechanics for a campaign that has no replayability and like 11 Dark Souls bosses. For me, the best part of AC and like the true end game of it is it's multiplayer. And I'm gonna be real, I don't see like any depth at all. It just feels like a 3 Mecha Souls poo poo fighter game, and that's kinda ass. How should FromSoft improve the next AC game? I don't think FromSoft will go back to how AC was before 6, in my eyes. They streamlined and casualized the game so more people would buy it. I feel like there is no going back after that. I do think they shouldn't have went down this path of streamlining and modernization, however you like to put it, I don't really care. As people would have bought it anyway, because FromSoft is notorious for being a dev that makes hard and unique games. Seeing them go from Verdict Day, a game with a shitload of features like Unax, Conquest Mode, FFA, 2v2, 4v4, 5v5s, with an operator as the fifth slot, co-op, into a game with only 1v1s and 3v3s with no ability to change the rules. The fact that they did that is very daunting to me. The game weirdly devolved and I have no idea why they thought it was okay to do this. I really like Armor Court 6. I really do. I love the campaign. It's honestly one of my favorite FromSoft campaigns. And it's not exactly a horror game like Sekiro or anything, you know, it really gets to blood pumping, but it's just, it's fun. Like, it's bombastic, it's graphically beautiful, and personally, it would be my game of the year 2023, Baldur's Gate 3 didn't exist. Also, I just want to mention shields, melees, I love how Six like, created and expanded those gear options. It feels amazing to have those. The PvP, on the other hand, okay, I love the campaign, but the PvP, not much of a selling point. Right now, the active player base is disappointingly small, numbering only 3,000-ish, like last I checked. And the thing is, PvP is how the game stays around. The AC6 didn't quite have that staying power, because the PvP just didn't have enough depth to stay around. Like, the movement, the gameplay, it's just not quite there. Even if it's fun, it doesn't stay because it's not engaging enough, especially compared to the likes of, like, 4th gen and 5th gen gameplay. And continuing on that line, the movement of 6, Armor Core 6, is just a bit disappointing. Especially coming off the heels of 4, well I can't say off the heels, it's been a decade, but from 4 and 5, it's just not there. It's not horrible, but it's just there's not enough depth. Like Overboost quick turning, like that tech is cool, but it's just, it's a thing, and like Overboost too, I have Assault Boost actually, I have mixed feelings about that considering how you get a damage boost and a defense boost, but in regardless, melee canceling, also fun experience but like that's about it like those two are the only techs that are like really big well then again keep in mind i played at launch so that's a huge caveat the movement of armor Quest, it's fun but it's just it's not enough depth especially compared to like the older gens and i think that most people think the same way too like if you look at the player charts six fell off hard it's that's unfortunate but anyways if talked about improvements what i'd like to see more PvP, like if they, they they made the movement, like they added like much more tech, like more tech, like more way to more skill expression in the movement, that'd be great. Also, 
if they change the hit reg to defender side. That would be huge. Why? You know what's nice? Moving and being rewarded for that movement, being rewarded for dodging those bullets. In my opinion, that's the biggest like thing to recommend defender side. And other than that, that's I think that's all about wish for. I mean, I really think that improve longevity of the game if they improve the quality of PvP. But at the same time, I'm not exactly asking for Force Gen Armor Core 2.0. Um, so I'm saying this, but from Soft Cook. Okay, here is the near take on Armored Core 6. I'm gonna try and summarize as much as possible because I'm so disenchanted with AC6 at this point. It's not even a year old, so here we go. What's the best aspect of AC6? The art direction. Parts, well, most of the parts look great. They look like they were taken straight from Armored Core 3, or third gen, as we call it. The ephemera set, however, looks like dog shit, and I hate all of the heavyweight parts. Um, what is the worst part of AC6? Question two. Uh, there's a few worst parts, so I'll summarize them. One, the stagger system sucks, and makes the time to kill in PvP way too short. The stagger system feels like it was tooled for boss fights, due to the cliché rule of threes in boss fights, or bosses with big health bars. But when they slap that same stagger system on every other target in the game, everything that doesn't have a boss size health bar gets deleted in an instant that they get staggered. Uh, melee is way too strong in PvP and plays too heavily off of the bullshit stagger system to create a variety of ways to easily pull off kill combos the second someone gets staggered. Uh, the introduction of hard lock and removal of turn speed limitations is a double-edged sword that, while it gives the player a quality of life improvement of keeping the target in the center of their screen at all times, allowing a better view of what the target is doing. It also creates balance problems between weight classes and leg types, and makes quick turning a redundant feature. A feature that added skill expression to the game by making the player manually turn to keep their target on screen. Uh, let's see... Salt Boost paired with Hardlock is also cancer because it turns the player into a guided missile that heads straight toward the target with no effort, lining the player up for an easy kick into any manner of punish that is capable of deleting another player, which exacerbates the brief time to kill problem. Assault Boost is a strictly beneficial move and has no downsides or punishes, but people assault boosting at you will always have an advantage over the person who isn't assault boosting. In previous generation of Armored Core 5 and Verdict Day, the move currently known as Assault Boost was punishable by way of knocking the player to the ground and staggering them if anything with sufficient impact tagged them while they were Assault Boosting, which was necessary because otherwise 5th Gen's Assault Boost would have simply been way too strong, just like how 6th Gen Assault Boost currently is. I'll just wrap up the negatives there, I'm sure there were others I thought of previously, but I've forgotten now. And the last question is, how should FromSoft improve AC in the next game? Well, for one thing, bring back Miyazaki as the director, no more Yamamura. Uh, throw away AC6's stagger system, because it just does not work. Retool all of the movement mechanics to better suit uh, movement and skill expression to more represent what 5th gen and I guess 4th gen had, except uh, without the whole 5th gen damage defense threshold system. That was the only part of 5th gen that I didn't think was very great in my opinion, because that in itself kind of inhibited style expression based on what you could actually get away with using in PvP. Um, another thing that they could do better for the next AC game is they should hold the PvP multiplayer aspect of the game as the focus, like they did in 5th gen. Because, let's be honest here, 
Nobody kept playing Armored Core 4 Answer or Verdict Day for years because of the single player story mode. They kept playing those games because the PvP was genuinely fun and didn't feel like bullshit to play. That's basically all I have to say about Armored Core 6. Now I'm gonna go cry that Armored Core 6 is not Armored Core Verdict Day 2.0. This has been the near take. You have a good day. The best aspect of Armored Core 6 was the visual presentation and the way it managed to grab from software's fan base and the new generation of gamers by providing familiar gameplay to their previous action game titles. They also provided amazing visuals and an extremely easy to follow story with gameplay that's immediately enticing to those who don't want to get really deep into it. The Steam description of the game also describes that familiar gameplay. The worst aspect of Armored Core 6 was the way they brought the series into the mainstream without really showing people the level of freedom and depth that allowed people to play these games for as long as they have. The foundation of the game's rules in combat were fairly consistent from 1 all the way to Verdict Day. Things like AP lead, turning speed, actually needing to aim and control your AC, customization below the surface, being able to engage at all ranges in multiple forms, and snipers. Generally lots of freedom and playstyle variety as the series went on, but it was very streamlined in an unnecessary way in Armored Core 6, especially when it comes to fighting at all ranges, to the point where they had to remove snipers and focus on the game being designed around close range engagements. The removal of turning speed also affected balance in the multiplayer, and the dynamics of building and AC fights in general. The multiplayer, despite being in a single-player focused game, has an overall negative perception for those who are willing to give it a chance, and an honest one at that. FromSoft can improve the next AC game by realizing that they don't need to be removing all the balance factors previously mentioned to bring the Armored Core experience to a modern audience. They're capable of making the game appease to older players or those wanting more, without being too obtuse or steep in the learning curve for newer players. They likely could have gone back to their roots with the way first generation was designed, and likely still had a hit success from every type of player and fan both new and old due to how close to origin it would have been, as opposed to this amalgamation of game design borrowing from their recent action game development. Oh, what was the best aspect of Armored Core 6? Well, this may not be the most obvious answer, but upon a little consideration, I have to say that um, really the environment design of Armored Core 6 was the best aspect. I mean, Rubicon 3 is just an incredibly well-realized world, and the most consistently good thing about it is just how cool the titanic industrial sprawl of the planet is, and how much fun it is to navigate. What's the worst aspect of Armored Core 6? It's challenging to answer this question. I mean, I. I AC6 failed to meet a lot of my expectations, and the bar was already pretty low because I tried to go in completely blind and open-minded. I also feel it's hard to answer this question by just singling out anything specific as being the worst aspect. I could say something like the hard lock, or maybe I could say turn speed, or the stagger system itself, and I think all three of these factors make or break the game in different ways. I would simply have to settle on saying that the worst aspect of the Armored Core 6 experience is that there's just not enough Armored Core in it. Let me explain. Part of the giant fighting robot guy sim genre is grappling with the controls, and nearly every AC game has taken steps towards making the controls more accessible and forgiving, while still presenting a challenge to the player when it comes to simply controlling the mech. And a lot of that has had to do with just, like, the technology that was available at the time for them to make the games. But, remember, you're the AC pilot, right? You're not the AC itself. In Armored Core 6, I feel that I am the AC, and it controls, consequently, the most fluidly in the series. I don't feel like I ever have a mastery over the controls, because I'm never fighting with them. Rather, I'm struggling with a lack of mechanics which challenge me to express myself, or even allow me to express myself, in the piloting and maneuvering of the AC. When I went back to play older AC games recently, I remembered this, and I realized almost immediately that I was fighting the controls just as much as I was doing battle with my opponent. If I were the pilot in that world, my AC would be screaming with overgy warnings, the servers would be pushed to the absolute fucking limits, 
and the gyros would be screaming in dismay as I pivot my AC on a fucking dime using a quick turn maneuver that definitely wasn't in the manual and certainly wasn't covered by the warranty. In Armored Core 6, the AC's boosters are automatic. My turning rate is basically uncapped and I can flick my mouse to target my opponent at any moment. And that's the thing, is like I can't even turn off my boosters to fall faster. <laughs> Like, there's just... it's not available. Uh, I even have hard lock, right, in case I need it. In an older AC game, it's a fact of life that my AC is not going to be able to turn fast enough to track the lightweight or whatever that's flanking me at Mach 3. I, the player, physically can't track the enemy AC, and my, my AC, furthermore, certainly can't, Then that's because of the limitations placed on the pilot within the mecha simulation aspect of the game, and how that's expressed to the player by the controls. I think giving players opportunities to innovate and develop their own style for making up for the limitations of their AC's hardware is a critical component of the player expression in these games, and that's mostly absent in Armored Core 6 because the mechanics just aren't there. Like, you have to make up for your piloting ability and the capabilities of your AC. And that's just not really a consideration in Armored Core 6. You just everything is plug and play. Of course, I have to you know, applaud the developers for making the sacrifices that they thought they needed to in order to ensure that the game would play well and feel good for the majority of players, many of whom would be newcomers of the series. In fact, the vast majority would be newcomers of the series. This is especially true for making the game feel good to play with the mouse, where restricted turning speed might just feel fucking awful. However, that's come at the loss of some fundamentals. When we all have near-perfect and automatic control of our craft, what's left for the player to do but just basically let the AC pilot itself, right? The simulation aspect is lost. Our ACs play so much more like characters in a fighting game, or from, like, for example, a later Souls game in the series, where there's a lack of weight, there's a lack of consequence or momentum to our movement. I mean, sure, there's an element of, like, surreal horror, to the way that our colossal ACs move about so effortlessly, but that lack of groundedness also makes this tear in the face of titanic bodies moving so uncannily and frighteningly quick a little frivolous, right? And that undermines an important aspect of the setting that's otherwise received a lot of attention in its care and development. Okay, how should From Software improve the next AC game? Well, uh, I don't know. There's really a lot of suggestions that I have. I think the most simple way to improve the next AC game would be to tell From Software that like, look, have a little bit more faith in your players. Please provide us with deeper mechanics to engage with, and don't remove features or dumb them down just because you're worried that players may not understand them. Most folks won't even notice that all the little elements of movement tech from the past games that allow them to optimize their movement are there. But the few who do will engage with those deep mechanics, like second stage boosting, chain boosting, quick turn, booster toggling, omnidirectional glide boost movement, boost drive, scan mode, and all the old shit like bunny hopping and like overboost cancels, right? Like, all of those little mechanics add a lot to the game, and they aren't required to complete the story in the slightest. You can get a good experience out of an R record game without even acknowledging that those, uh, those cool mechanics exist, and it's all those little things that add up and matter. Now, in closing, I did want to highlight the fact that FromSoft made a massive effort for Armored Core 6 to be successful. They struck at the right time right off their success with Elden Ring, with their marketing partnership with Bandai Namco being so intense in the West that it even got weird at times. Neck damage. No. Sure, I can transfer you to my supervisor. Hold on. 30 seconds. If you get above 50, that's a freaking great score. And if you get above 55, well, I will handshake you and welcome you to the Armored Core. It's up to her now as a recruit to join the pilot training program and be part of the Armored Core. Good luck to you, recruit. Three, two, one. Come on, recruit. You got this. You got 10 seconds. You got to work. Rubicon's on fire. Do you even know what's happening out there? Come on, pilot. You got this. Get those lights. Right hand, left hand. You got this. You feeling nervous? That's exactly how you're going to feel out there. How'd I do? <laughs> Score is 50. I got 50. Congratulations, recruit. You might get a letter from the Armored Corps. OK, great. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the Coral Augmentation Station. 
in the game, it's a super soldier serum. You take the coral to get leveled up. Okay. So go enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Feed the fire. Let the last cinders burn. But despite everything, I can see that FromSoft wanted to do the series justice, but also throw out the widest net possible as an introduction to the series for a lot of people. Which is to say, I think they played it a bit too close to their chest to not alienate people. But the wait for the most part is worth it. And if I don't feel like playing AC6, I can always hop on 4 Answer, Verdict Day, 4, 9 Breaker, Last Raven, or any of the other AC games on PC with emulation, and play with others in environments that expect far more from the player. I do realize that most of this video has been pretty negative, but those are my honest thoughts. I don't hate the game, I like it overall, but I don't entirely love it either. There are plenty of people out there that talk at length about the positive aspects of the game, and there is a dedicated group of players writing their own history with the game. I just hope that after they make the Escaflone, Aura Battler Dunbine, spiritual successor game that Miyazaki mentioned in an interview, they'll go back and truly evolve what they left Verdict Day with, and take what they learned from AC6 as a comeback story. I'm looking forward to the future of Armored Core, and from software as a whole, and I hope that you have a good day.